noting that we began a little bit after, we'll still try to finish on time. Um, thinking this largely is uh, taking care of a little bit of business at the start, but then we'll kind of jump into a working session on the draft report. Uh, would be my hope, and that possibly even making kind of group edits on the screen as we roll. But I'm also proposing that we kind of discuss how to roll today, so so we're all clear and on the same page. Just uh, uh, next up would be uh, when I offer as a committee review of the agenda. I, given that I, as chair, I've put put together some offerings for an agenda, gave some thought to how this might work, asked Deb to send it around. But uh, I want you know to make sure everybody's good with it. Do you understand it first? And uh, anybody have any additions or changes to the proposed agenda for the day? I have an update on our project that I would like to share with everybody. We'll so I, I did updates. include the member update thing in here. So uh, you know, we will we'll, we will cover that. You know, the general idea is the nuts and bolts, the review of, of, uh, of minutes, the member updates, and then kind of discussing how to, how to go about our next steps today and whatever might come next in completing our, our deliverable. Uh, and a few thoughts to, 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 uh, to jumpstart that, but I welcome other input on that. And then, you know, the bulk of the meeting being kind of a working session on review and discussion of, discussion of the draft thought made it sense to offer public comment before we made any wrap up if, with a, say a possible vote or a decision about how to, how to move next. Um, that's um, and then kind of a clarification confirmation of, of those next steps. So that's what I put forward. Does it sound good to everybody as, as our agenda for the day? Okay, hearing no other comments, we'll, we'll assume that. Um, <clears throat> Uh, thanks to Ellen, we have excellent minutes, draft minutes uh, from our 1015 meeting, and I would ask which you all have received, and I would ask if there's a for a motion to approve. Uh, to, to yes, to, to approve. So moved. Is there a second? Second to uh, move the minutes. For a second. <laughs> thanks, John. I move by Robert. Thank, uh, seconded by um, Representative Bartholomew. Any discussion? Yes, Steve. Just a question. On the second page, there's a sentence. Senator Hardy stated that she has heard from constituents concerns about the makeup of the group. Um, <laughs> I wonder if she could flesh that out just a little bit. For the purposes Where, of the minutes, it's right at the top, the first paragraph of page two. <laughs> oh, I, I just... Um, I'm not sure exactly how I ordered it, but just that concerns that the the group may individual members of the group may have their own uh, agendas or whatever. For I think that's pretty common when when, <laughs> when there's a group, people are like, "Why is that person on the group?" or whatever. I think that's what I meant. Mm -hmm. Nothing okay. specific. And I, I guess I would like, to, as long as we're commenting on it, I, I, I think that's fair. And, a fair, and it, this, as, I, as I remember, this is a fair statement of what was said and why. You know, so, so I think it stands. Um, and I, I take this opportunity to say where it says Chair Snyder stated that he did not want to be the chair of this group or be on it. Um, <laughs> that was in, just to make it I, in response to hearing that people were questioning the makeup. And I said, well, for my part, I didn't even ask for this. So not knowing. I guess I'll let it stand because I actually said it and I meant it in that context. Uh, any other comment, uh, discussion for, for approving the minutes? Actually, I maybe do it. <coughs> so, wonder when it talks about my comment about uh, the rules, <coughs> carbon accounting rules. Yep. Yeah. Um, I think um, you, uh, Robert, had talked about um, the two groups that have created those rules. Could could we include those two groups in in, the, in these minutes, which? Which one was from, I believe, the IPCC. Uh, I, I, I failed to write down. Mark, there are any number of reports where in the minutes here. Just, I'm just I'm middle, of page two. Two. middle of page two. Middle of page two. Okay, where it thank you. Talks about the question that I had asked about the carbon accounting rules. Mr. Turner stated that there are, and they, they depend on which market, either compliance or voluntary, and which registry the project is part of. And I, and I remember, I thought you had told me which two groups had created those rules. Um, well, so this gets into the weeds a little bit, and I don't know that it's appropriate for the minutes, but um, I think compliance and voluntary are really the two groups. And, you know, it started in the voluntary market. The compliance market really picked up a lot of the rules from the voluntary market. And, and since then, 
these various registries have developed many of their own rules, so it's not an easy question to answer really, except that there are compliance rules and voluntary rules and a mishmash of everything. I mean, they're basically consistent, but they're, but they're little bits and differences each. The point, I think, to answer your question was really that there are rules, and the IPCC sort of set the stage by saying, at least in general terms, this needs to be transparent and there needs to be, uh, you know, a, a process. And, and then the specifics are developed by these various agencies down the line. So, you know, I don't know really how to answer your question except to say that, uh, you know, that there are a variety of bodies that that are Maybe maybe I had maybe I had said that there was the region and that there was the California and there was the uh, ANSI and both govern. I think that was it. Both govern process. It, uh, in the report, when we go over the content of the report, it's at, there's a paragraph that on page five that lists the registries. Oh, I don't know whose section this was anymore. Cause it's all gotten mesh bash, but that it's there are several off. globally recognized registries and standards of which most relevant for U.S. forest products are the American <coughs> Carbon Registry or the ACR, Climate Action Reserve or the CAR, the American Carbon Registry, ACR, and, oh, that's in there twice, I didn't catch that, mm -hmm. and the Verified Carbon Standard or VCS. Okay. So those were the ones that I believe Robert said in there in the report and we can sort of, if you want, we could make that a no, that, Will that get it done for you, Representative? No, yep. yeah, yeah, okay. I just further I discussion need. on the minutes. Cecilia, welcome. Uh, you, you're not that late. We we, we delayed the start because several folks, you know, had some difficulty traveling. So thanks for being here. Yeah. Uh, we're just barely through the into. We agreed that the agenda looked fine, and we're into the improving the minutes, and we're in the discussion phase <laughs> of, of the, minutes the minutes from last week. Yep. Got from it. Last time. Any other discussion on the minutes? Hearing none, um, all those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Minutes carry, thank you. Thanks again, Ellen, for taking care of those. Uh, round table of uh, member updates. I'll, I'll pass and uh, offer open the table to any members who would like to make an update. Jim. Yeah, so I wanted to update people on the status of our Burnt Mountain project because we did present it to the group. <laughs> um, as, uh, so I just want to let everybody know that after we did our full carbon inventory this summer and looked that over, uh, they, the, we made the determination through Blue Source, who was developing the project for us, that um, there was not enough carbon at Burnt Mountain to make a financially feasible project for the California compliance market. Because we're still probably, at least I will admit, in the learning mode. That means um, be uh, above business as usual, so the regional the, average. Well, or? yeah. So the delta between business as you, the regional average yep. stocking and the stocking <coughs> we were projecting wasn't enough. Wasn't enough to cover all of the costs of developing the project and go yeah. forward. So yeah. therefore, but because the forest is well stocked. Um, we were able to shift that project into the voluntary market. And I could spend a lot of time on what we had to do to do that, but it was a very quick turnaround. So the project is still going forward. It's just a voluntary project now, um, which will change the way that the baseline is calculated. It's a project baseline, not a regional baseline, and that um, the pay, the credit sales will occur over 10 years, and we will have a 40-year commitment at Burke Mountain to do that. So that... Um, in which protocol are you going in? ACR. ACR. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I think uh, the, if you want to know more, the, I, what we figured was happening was the the initial analysis was done based on the timber inventory <coughs> that was done for the when we were appraising the property. Mm -hmm. Uh, when they did the carbon inventory, it turned out our trees were not as tall as they were projecting. So um, still beautiful trees, just not as um, tall as we wanted them to be. And so that was probably the biggest difference in the Delta. There were also some uh, issues with um, growth rates and uh, some regeneration issues based on soils. So it was sort of a combination of factors, but largely what the best we can figure is that we have short trees at Burnt Mountain and uh, that's making a difference. However, there's still a very viable um, voluntary project and we've moved forward with that and we're starting to market to companies on that. So 
for transparency. I wanted to share that with the group because we have been sharing that as a compliance project and we'll uh, be reaching out to the rest of the public and sharing that information. Thanks for the update, Jim. Any so. further questions for Jim on the update? Steve. Yeah, what's the elevation range for that project? Oh gosh, it goes to up to 3,000 feet mm -hmm. and then all the way down to about 1,500 feet. With a lot of it being north facing as well. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Other member updates? Anybody have anything they'd like to share? Everybody's been too busy pounding on the report, I suppose, right? <laughs> okay. Uh, then let's uh, move to the next item, a discussion of our process and next steps to completion. Um, I think we've had several meetings to kind of learn, and along the way we've kept an eye on the charges before us and kind of thought about how to, how to go about them with the information we're learning about uh, and kind of inching our way towards an outline <coughs> that then got sort of fleshed out. Um, <clears throat> thanks to Ruth, uh, Senator Hardy offering to be the kind of lead editor and compiler, formatter. We have now a draft, uh, in her words, that's still rough, pretty rough. We'll, we'll get to that. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, I, I, we have, I, I, I just try to set the stage here. We have a limit on the number of meetings, physical meetings we could have for which, but it's only in the, in the financial context. We're limited because we can only have five minutes meetings for which we pay um, the travel per diem, et cetera, for members who get that. <laughs> um, so that means this is our last meeting where we would travel, but we did look into it and our, our council indicates that we could continue as needed with a remote meeting uh, where folks who would otherwise be compensated for travel um, would, if they're willing, be able to participate by phone so long as there was somebody who and I would volunteer to be that person who hosted a physical site meeting where the public could, any members and the public could come. So we could have a teleconference, we could do it by Skype, uh, FaceTime, whatever, video, and do have another meeting, if we're going to have a virtual meeting, if we need it. Um, and I'm guessing we probably do, but we have a few hours here largely dedicated towards trying to <coughs> get at least to some clarity about what should be in the document. <coughs> and, and as far as we can in agreeing on what is in the, you know, the document itself, knowing that we could, if we can't get over the line, we could have another to wrap it up, maybe to do a final discussion and vote, if you will. Um, so I just wanted to put that out first, that we, we have that little safety net, as I would see it, as a, a little extra time. Frankly, the, the charge is to deliver by January 15th. I think we're feeling pressed because we want to be done for the holidays and to meet potential <laughs> drafting deadlines. But I think it's only fair to acknowledge that the, the law says we have till January 15th. Um, we're just limited by the reimbursements, and I want to honor that. Um, so if we need to get more, we can get more, and I just want everyone to be, that's our understanding of the open meeting laws and how they would apply here. So, so sure, Question. Cecilia. If we were willing to meet without being reimbursed, is that an option, or you don't want to really even put that out there? Well, I, I would leave that to, to the group. I think we would be allowed. I don't know. I'd kind of like to get confirmation of that. Uh, I don't think it's intended to limit our work. It's intended to limit the fiscal implications. Um, and I think the work is more important. But I, I don't get paid for it. I get paid otherwise, right? So I want to be respectful of others. And I would say I'm open to it if you are. And if so, I would, if it came to that, I would ask to get kind of an official okay on that. So with that, um, you know, I, I, I would offer that I, maybe we could start. I'll just throw this out as a, just to get us started, um, to agree on how we should spend the, make productive use of the time here, given what we're trying to get done. That perhaps we could hear from Senator Hardy on just process of what she's done, uh, orient us to re level set us all on the document, the latest version. Um, and we could kind of go through and make sure we understand how it relates to the charges and who's got ownership or at least original authorship, <clears throat> that kind of thing. Or sort of an introduction from Senator Hardy. And then, you know, I'm hoping that we could have uh, a working session. I'm hoping that that's what's next is, you know, group editing on the screen where we go through and is that going to work? I'd ask that right now. Can we do that? Can we at least try that? Well, change out of the right there in line two. It, it could be difficult. Maybe we could agree to have like more of the high level of like what are the pieces and the maybe save the wordsmithing for when the next hour when we're all done, right? Or later. 
I'd offer that. Um, so I, can I just confirm with you all that you're agreeable to having kind of a group editing working session after <laughs> introduction from Senator Yes? <coughs> okay. yeah, and that maybe we could discuss how to do that or just organically go do it and try to play nice in the sandbox and we'll get through it. <laughs> Any comments so far, Robert? Just a real quick question. Um, for, for us here, how many have had a chance to read and feel like they've digested what's in this draft? Has everybody had a chance to do that? Or the last draft? This draft. The last draft. This draft. Draft. I know. I know. This, <laughs> not, not so much this There's one. There's a lot of new stuff in here. Okay. Okay. Um, and maybe that should be a part of the overview yeah, that, I can go that on Senator Hardy leads us through, and that others can say, well, this is, you know, and so we'll start with that, kind of get oriented to it. What's new? At least flag what's super new. Well, I can also explain what, as I was going through the document, what. I needed in order to make what I still need to make the document coherent. That, I think that'd enough. be great if you do that as <laughs> yeah. part of your big overview. We'll spend a fair amount of time with with Senator Hardy guiding us through that. Yes, Mark. So oh, sorry, Representative would, Higley. Yeah, that's fine, Mark. It's fine. Um, would you prefer that you went through it and then any questions you you know we just earmark where we want to ask questions? Yeah, yeah, that would be would good. Be for you? And then I, I'm happy to have this if we can connect my computer to the screen and to do the, the editing thing, as long as it's not in the detail of the uh and the uh and that kind of thing, because <laughs> that will get super annoying. But the big picture, I'm fine with that. Um, I think we're in agreement. Yeah. Then thank you for offering to do that. Yeah. If Deb uh, and Brian, you can help facilitate that connection while we're getting oriented, that would be really great. Thank you. Um, um, go ahead. OK. Do you want me to no, go through the draft? No, I, I, I wanted to oh, okay. make sure we're all set. Okay. Uh, so what else should we? So that's how we'll start with Senator Hardy kind of guiding us through what she's done, the changes, what's needed, et cetera, flagging that each of us kind of paying attention and flagging if we want to come back and discuss things. We'll let her get through it, I think it makes sense, right? And then we'll come back through the next pass is, OK, what about this? What about that? Not uh and the, but you know, sub substantive kind of <laughs> stuff. Uh, and get and, and just work as diligently as we can to kind of come to agreement on each section of what's there um, as best we can. Maybe having to leave some things for further discussion, I, I would suggest, is possible. Keep that in mind, and then get to get through it, and then we can re reset together here to say where do we stand, and is are are we able to get to kind of some a final plan? Like we could regroup then and kind of decide what's needed next when we see how far off we might be or how far on. Okay, uh, and then at some point, I think I'd like to at least consider, like, what does it mean for us to agree, and what are we agreeing on, and what are we trying to ultimately do with, like, is it consensus, is it a, 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 a majority vote, and if so, I would like to propose there's at least an opportunity for sort of a minority statement, um, if that ne is needed, I just that I think that should be available if we decide we need that. So I think those are the thoughts I had in terms of what we should consider for a process Comments, thoughts, suggestions, otherwise. Jim? I have a question that came up. Somebody asked me yesterday was whether the, there would be an opportunity for people to weigh in on the draft before it's finalized. Yes, uh, today and during, during public, public comment. Yeah, okay. That would be it. And I, okay. I mean, it is a legislative working group with experts yeah. added and um, some bureaucrat, I suppose. And, uh, <coughs> and then we, um, and that's our job. Okay. But we want to hear from people. But I don't think it's required or appropriate to share a draft publicly for comment. Okay. It's not. It's not. It's not in our charge. Yeah. Anybody, everybody okay, I just, I just yep. need clarity. Any other comments on how we're going to roll from here? If not, we will move into review and discussion of working group uh, report draft status review questions. That's Senator Hardy. Um, all good to go. Super. Okay. Thank you again, Senator. Take it away. Thank you. Um, so I. I my goal was to make it consistent across the sections because I think I got content from seven different people, I believe, um, with different writing styles and different understandings of what they were supposed to do. So it was a little challenging. Um, and I still was getting content. I think you sent me something around 5 o'clock yeah. yesterday. So that's why I didn't send you this until this morning, and there's still a lot to do. So I just want to say up front, this is nowhere close to a, a complete final draft and, and um, but it's a lot better than it was um, I believe it is 31 pages long the original was 46 pages so I got it down a lot um, by 15 pages but but I, I want to be clear that I I tried really hard not to change the content 
it, it was mostly to change the style, sometimes the wording, to make it more clear in my head, um, and um, to get rid of some redundancies, although there's a lot of redundancy still in here, because I think everybody, with their expertise, re-explained the same things, <laughs> um, which is fair. Sure. And to be, and to be honest, it was fairly consistent. Like, I didn't find a lot of differences in the explanations of the science or the, you know, the way the markets worked. So I thought that was good news. Like, there wasn't a complete radical difference in <laughs> the way people were explaining things. Um, as we go through this, one thing that would, I think, would be helpful to try to edit it is I start, I, when I, when I, I started an introduction section, that's the very first part. And I tried to edit that down to try to, demo, to to define some of the terms that we were going to be using throughout the report, like what, what is carbon sequestration, what is a forest carbon offset, those kinds of things. And then as I kept reading through the report, it's repeated multiple times. So this introduction section probably can be taken down even further, um, or we can talk about what exactly we want to have in the introduction section. But. Um, <coughs> I think really what would be helpful after we go through the draft is figuring out what are the major findings and to be able to enumerate the major findings. What are the major recommendations and to be able to enumerate the recommendations. Because as I was editing, I was like, what are we actually recommending? What does the group actually think? Because a lot of times people were saying in the draft, the working group found X, Y, and Z. And I was like, do we all feel like we found that? I don't know if we felt like we we haven't really decided what we quote unquote found. So if that if you all could think about what you would we what you think we found and what you think our recommendations should be, I think that should be a thrust of what we of what we discussed today. And then the editing of the report would come would follow that in a lot of ways. Thank because you for that. It's very clear, and I, I accept that. I think that makes sense. I, can we just pause? I'd like yeah. to just make a comment. For your benefit, I, I mean, to, to acknowledge your work on it and to say, I think, um, to, to everyone who, who, who sent stuff in, that I think it, I think that's, we kind of agreed, and I think it's appropriate that folks said, the, the working group found, from some, my perspective, say, I wrote that, and I said the working group found, and I think we should accept that anyone can say that, any of the members. Oh, yeah. But then we get to do this. You get to say, well, what did we and didn't we, and guide us through kind of agreeing that we did or didn't. I think it's, it's okay that people did that. Oh, yeah, saying. yeah, it's totally and, fine that people did that. It's just that we want to... We yes. now have to speak yeah. as a group. Appreciate you and if, clarifying yeah. that, that. That's a really important task force, and should come before the wordsmithing. Exactly, because if we start to, one of the reasons I actually stopped editing was because it got to the point <coughs> where how we stated things could be different depending on what our findings yeah. were. Um, if you, if that makes sense. So yeah. that'll be something so, for discussion. Is can we agree that this is what we found? or therefore this is what we'd like to recommend. Right, and, like and for we'll, example, oh. is the one finding might be that the, that the voluntary market is more appropriate than the compliance market for much of Vermont forest land. That's an example, and that's what you just found with your project. It and, seems to be, yes. Yeah, and it <laughs> seems to be what, based on what I was reading, that that might be one of our findings. Excellent. But maybe not. So those okay. are this sort of off Anyone discussion. have any other thoughts on that? I mean, I, I'm saying I think that sounds like a good plan. Everybody else good with it? Mm -hmm. Great. Continue, Senator. Please. Okay. And so I started put, after the introduction section, I put major findings and, and recommendations huh. as a section. I didn't fill it in. You can see major findings is totally blank. One of my um, first comments was... <laughs> Where did this come from? Exactly. <laughs> I started to list them, but I was like, did we find this? Like, Great. I don't know. I think so. Well, it's helpful I, I, to you flat, you're suggesting this would be a place to at least introduce those things. I mean, I'm starting, I'm thinking, and, and uh, the other legislators at the table can correct me if I'm wrong, but if we, you know, when we're, when we're sitting down to look at one of these reports, we are going to go introduction, finding recommendations, boom. We might not read the rest of it because you've seen the stacks of paper. You're kind of thinking of it as this introduction as an executive summary. Exactly. We need to be right up front in the first few pages what did what what did what is introduced the topic what did we make what are our major findings what are our recommendations then the rest of the report can flow through the details of why we found the things we did why we recommended the things we did for people who want to get into the weeds yeah it also provides better content for the rest of the yeah. story if you if you're so inclined why did we say, yeah why did we land there well here's how we got there right. exactly but so i that, agree the first 
two pages because we're going to get a hundred of these on January fifteenth. Well, you and asked for them, I mean, I, <laughs> I probably voted no on them. Yes, <laughs> you voted for this one. Um, anyway, and, and some of them we didn't ask for, just to be fair. But um, <laughs> people, uh, lots of organizations like to send us their reports and tell us that this is what we should do. Right. Um, Anyway, so that was that's sort of my structural thing: uh, executive summary, findings, <coughs> recommendations, then all the information, and then the appendix, the appendices. I think I put the the actual language of the bill or right. the law in the appendix, the first appendix. Why the heck are we doing this? Because the law says we have to. And then, for example, <laughs> it's not in here yet, but for example, Jack sent me a little case study of the Middlebury College right. project. And I thought that could actually go into the appendix, yep. not in the body of the so report. Um, and I was I was thinking of for that section of just listing projects, and then if you want to speak to more of the Burnt Mountain sure. one or whatever, we put those in the appendix for people who really want to dig in yep. to you know, the, the nerds like Robert out there who really want to <coughs> dig in. <laughs> but people who just want to know what we found would just, so. so affectionate and respectful oh, use of the term. of course, <laughs> yeah. absolutely. Um, so then the current status of the markets, and, and this is where we start getting into a lot of. Um, okay, that's charge one. That's charge one. This is starts to get into a lot of the meat of the report, but also the repetition of the report. Um, and I took out, all, I made different um, headings than the awkward headings that are in the bill, it's in the law itself. I tried to summarize what the headings so were. That, that was one of my questions, is will it be a plan to, because I was losing track of where the different charges were, mm -hmm. right. Do we, is it important from a legislator's perspective, because this is for you guys, um, to see it as hit it charge by charge and just deciding what goes in what each part? Thanks for bearing with us, everyone. Keep going, Senator. Okay. So the, the question was, right. is there any reason to preserve is that sort of organization by charge, or is it better just to make a coherent document <laughs> with findings in? I think it's better to make a coherent document. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you guys want to We talked about it a little bit here, just as we were waiting and looking at your new draft. And, yeah. And, uh, I, I, I benefited from Robert having gone through and putting a one, a two, a three, for, you know, just, I think for our benefit, given we've thought about the charges and I am, we're kind of a stickler for making sure we hit the charges, that I would agree that in the final report, it's not helpful and your sort of better language of it is, is more appropriate. Mm -hmm. But maybe it's helpful for us to keep track as we go through to understand what charge is which. Okay. You see what I mean? So maybe in our working draft, we can still at least annotated as which charge we're, we're in just to make sure we cover right. everything exactly. that we're legally but then we don't necessarily we'll maybe we can agree that we're not going to use those headings in the document <laughs> no. does that work for everybody that works for the legislators great so the so, current status is charge one basically right. um, so i can i'll type that in just as a and we'll keep doing so for each one as we move through this document today. So right now we're still listening to you describing it. You're not supposed to comment on anything. Yeah. Yes. If you want to write down your comments. Keep track of what the things you want to say, right. Okay. Um, Other than clarifications from what the Senate is saying. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and so as I was editing, the other things um, that came to mind oh. is how we want to uh, use citations. Um, so we have to be consistent. And I started to make them consistent and then you're the editor and so i think we should defer to what you think is easiest for you to do okay thank you i think i think the easiest thing to do is to have just a, a hot link if it's an online source the problem with that is that when uh they get printed out it's lost it gets lost and so and Corey's not here, but in, in the Senate, we print, as you know, we, <laughs> we print everything out. So I'm just concerned about we'll make my it's okay. particular <laughs> colleagues not being able to see the sources. So that's where I stopped. I started to make everything hot links. That's how you had done it. And I was like, this makes more sense. Um, but then, then I got concerned about right. our inability to, to link on them. And, and I, I do think there's so many other reports that have already been done, and all everybody who sent me content um, referenced pretty much the same sources. There were a few variations, but that one particular Is this source, leading to a, a consensus here, agreement, that we go with the, what are you calling it, the 
hot, hot links. link and, so, and, and, and just kind of go with it and make it known to people that this is kind of an electronic document and if, if you want to know those sources when you're reading a hard copy you need to go to um, this website and you can download it and have access. Something so, like that. Just well, so what I was going to say is to do sort of cut the difference is to have the hot links within, <coughs> embedded in the document and have an appendix with it all listed, like a bibliography. You're willing um, to do that, that as editor. What do you think? The, you're the academic, so that's why I'm looking at you. I'm like deferring to you. Is that sufficient? Do you know how to um, style books? Well, I mean, the other style. option is just to turn them all into footnotes. Which gets awkward, especially if you're going in and out of Google Docs. And yeah. The footnotes got all messed up, and you'll see some. Some I tried to get rid of a lot of the footnote gobbledygook, a word my mom used to use. Um, but um, it's still somewhat in there. But you're right; it's really hard to keep footnotes consistent in a document. Unless there's, so. unless there's real objection, please say it. I would just, as chair, just say, let's make a decision to accept your hybrid approach. If you're willing to do that, is the the hot link it, but dump it all into a bibliography. So you kind of have the both. Does that Everybody sound? good? Okay. I think we should roll with that. So I guess the, the thing I would ask for those of you who sent me content is if you could send me the proper citations from all of your, um, in the form that Cecilia chooses, because she, I, I'm sorry, <laughs> you're the academic, because I want to make sure that we we don't get dinged on not um, citing our sources as right. well. There was just a report that came out yeah. that, ha that happened yeah. where sources were not cited appropriately. So I want to make sure that, so if you, if you all who sent me content can give me the citations and then I'll just have you look at the citation list mm -hmm. to make sure okay. it's correct. And our staff, you all hip to that? Thank mm -hmm. you. Or, if, excuse me, but if, Cecilia, if you have a style guide, I'm happy to put my citations in the appropriate format. Yes. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's a couple things. There's one thing is how to write it up in a reference, and then it's how to cite it in the text, and they kind of go together. So there's something called APA, which is often used in the environmental sciences yep. because it crosses social and natural sciences. And um, in text citations, you would put the author and the year in parentheses right after you said it. Yep. And then you could hotlink that even if you want, and then you would put the full citation at the end. And that would keep us connected so they know that this goes with that. Um, yeah. That would be my first recommendation. I didn't do that for the most part in my section. I sort of let's go with author date in parens yep. at the in the text, and then the full citation date author uh, author date and full citation in the bibliography. Everybody good? Representative Bartholomew. We're going to do this then as basically like a literature cited in a scientific paper. Is yes. That? And, essentially, um, if that's what people want, I, I think that makes the most sense. But then also, you said it's going to be at the end, because I was looking through the introduction, reading through, and there were citations, and then I finally found them on page seventeen, I think. Right, and that's so they're because all, they're all going to go at the end. Yeah, I'll put okay, them all at the why end. We're going to they, do it just to clean that up. I yeah. didn't want to go in one direction and then have come here and have put in all the work of doing all the citations and then have you all say, no, oh, I don't want it that way. So I stopped messing with the citations. And, and in order to consult with all of you. Um, and specifically, you wanted to make sure this is, this is a sort of scientific policy paper, and so wanting to make sure that we're being uh, respectful of both fields. <laughs> um, OK. Um, so I'll do that. So you can just ignore, I'll clean up the citations after I get everything. So if, um, uh, then, um, so the current status and the introduction part overlapped a lot. So if we are okay with making the introduction, as Corey said, sort of an executive summary, then I'll put some of the stuff that's in the introduction in the car in the current status section. Does that make sense? I'm not sure I follow. I mean, yeah. I because I, I, to me, an executive summary is the summary. So it would be to some extent duplicative. And so you have, I think you have an intro that just kind of says what this is and what's in it, and then you get into it and you write everything, and then at the sort of at the end you go through and you summarize all of that. So the executive summary takes a little bit from each. So the yeah. exec executive summary would be the piece that you guys would really be looking at as legislators or in, in the interest of public, right. and then each layer beyond. So it, so I think the that's what I would propose is an actual executive summary, yeah. then a sh very short introduction that's just about the charge. And, and how we rolled, uh, okay. and what's in the report, and then you have the report. 
this, the executive summary will repeat some of that because that's what it is. It's a, it's a distilled summary. So executive summary, intro, major findings, recommendation, then the bulk Char of the... Then the bulk of the report. Okay. Then All appendices right. and uh, literature cited. Everybody good with that? Okay. All right. Um, okay. So the current uh, status has some subsections, and I was, I, I was, everybody had different ways of, of sectioning off their things, so I was trying to make it consistent. Thank you. And I didn't fully make it consistent yet, but um, trying to have major headings be in bold and then subheadings be maybe in uh, italics or, or numerated. Um, and that I also was toying with having like a major sentence that is a, something that I thought would maybe be a major <coughs> finding. And this is where I was sort of getting to the major findings in italics. So as an example, one of the things uh, is that um, we found, I think we found that um, <laughs> harvesting is consistent with um, carbon markets <coughs> in a forest, in a carbon market, you can still harvest, right? That's a finding. I, I personally think that's an important finding because there um, is concern out there that that's not true. Um, so that was something I italicized, and then I was like, ooh, is this a, would this be considered a major finding? We'll, so as we you can, discussed earlier, we'll discuss, we'll discuss that, that, and it's that, actually helpful to see it italicized, because then we know what to discuss. Right, so that was just, that's an example of something that yeah. I was like, I felt like that was an important thing to call out um, and wanted to have a conversation about it. So, um, um, yeah, I don't want to go through this paragraph by paragraph, but um, just having the sort of, feedback on um, how to organize it will help me cut this down more. I'm not I, sure this, I'll ask this because then you can tell me this isn't the time because we're going to save most of our questions for you as we go through this. But well, so, go ahead. So, I mean, sure. so I would ask, one, I would ask, uh, could we maybe suggest that it, as you say, you've got the major headings, maybe have a major, major heading, like this is charge one. I know we're not going to use the language, but, um, but have that be at, it, at a higher hierarchy than the sub ones. Mm -hmm. they're, they're all in the same bold and font, and maybe the main one should be the biggest, and then the others that are sub type yep. headings for each section. So that there's major sections, and then they can have subsections, and that those are differentiated. But each of the major ones have the same level of order or yep. hierarchy. Okay. That makes any sense at all. So <coughs> that, is that the kind of thing we should wait until you're done to ask or suggest? Well, no, that's fine. I mean, the current status of carbon sequestration markets is clearly a big section. Exactly. So that will be, excuse me. And a lot of the font got, I tried to, there were also, I think, six different fonts. So, I so for example, <laughs> the, next, the next large one would be the case for offset projects in Vermont, which is basically charge two, as you've reworded it. So yeah. everything between those two should be at a lesser yep. order of hierarchy, yep. in my view. Okay. So and then that, that next one should have the same level as the first the the uh, the current status one. Okay, got it. I will I will um, okay. heading consistency. Um, I'll put that down. Um, the one other thing I wanted to ask you all about was some people provided me with charts and graphs and visuals, <laughs> which I think is really helpful and good to have in here. Um, but I wanted to make sure that you all felt like the ones that are in here are. If you would like to make a call, please hang up and try again. If you need help, hang up and dial your op. Thank you. Um, so, so the first one, and there were a couple, also there were a couple things that I felt like, um, so when we, uh, that could use some visuals, for example, so, I don't know whose content this was, but explaining carbon, this carbon sequestration um, uh, cycle. Um, I've seen nice visuals that explain that, and I was wondering if any of you who did this, a lot of this content, have one that we could put in here that's a sort of, you know, that's the, in the science. A graphic <laughs> of the, the carbon cycle? Yeah, so the carbon sequestration cycle, photosynthesis, that yeah. whole thing. You know, it seemed like it would be a nice 
I can find one, I think, and I'll show it. So. Okay. Yeah. If you could I think send there's that plenty of good ones, and, and um, Robert, thanks for offering to, to offer one up. I was going to Google it, but I just thought you all would probably have one that was nicer. Um, and um, so then on page, the first um, one is on the top of page five. And this is the... It's not, so I didn't have titles on all of these because a lot of people didn't. The, the right. potential ver variety of prices in the, in the voluntary market. Um, I guess what I'm asking is, is what do you all think are the most important things that we have a visual with? And um, the, are th those that advance the narrative? Yeah, and are narrative. the ones that are in here the right ones? Um, I, I did take one of them out that I. If someone has put good. one in, I'd leave it to the, lead, the the original author to explain that, give them a chance to yeah, you know, yeah. justify whatever. Um, but I would agree, we need they're helpful when they're helpful, and they're not when they're not, and we want to be consistent with how we set them up and title them and um, right and explain. Them. So if you are looking online, some of the things I've highlighted in yellow were notes to myself that I needed to go back and make sure it was consistent. So if we had exhibit one. If there's a bunch of editing, maybe exhibit one in the end becomes exhibit two, but we have to make sure we go back and change the one to a two. So I highlight <laughs> just to keep track of it for myself. Um, but so that this one on the top of five, I, I don't remember if this came from Cecilia. Yeah, I dropped Robert. that one in okay. just because um, I was actually editing some uh, somebody else wrote about prices, and I'm pretty sure they got it from here, and it was similar but different. Anyway, I just wanted to show that there's, if you take the time to read it, that there's the red numbers are actually the number of transactions and the green um, bars are the volume of what is sold. <coughs> so there's a lot sold really cheap, mm. but there's a, in terms of volume, but there's a high number of that are well over $12 um, a ton. And so it's supposed to show that, you know, the charismatic carbon can get that higher price. So it shouldn't be, and it's just, it doesn't even make sense almost to average in the voluntary market because there are all these different arrangements oh, about okay. how you're going to be marketing your stuff sort of individually with a story for Burnt Mountain and such. So maybe it takes too much to understand that. It says up in the text up above that the prices range from, um, average prices range three to six dollars a ton, but they could be anywhere from less than 10 cents a ton to over $70 a ton. And so this chart is trying to show you that there's a lot Mm -hmm. of transactions at the high end, but they may be small because, you know, Burnt Mountain's not that big, but they may be able to sell theirs for $30 a ton um, to a Vermont uh, purchaser who cares about place in the story. Um, but that we, And that we don't really want to be targeting this commodity where, you're, where most of the carbon is sold for under a buck a ton. Is this an international? This is, I'm pretty sure it is. Largely. Yes. Largely. Yeah, so yeah. That, that would explain the bulk of low price. Right, right. I think the sentence that you just said <coughs> doesn't make sense to average the voluntary market prices. We should say in there explicitly, because I didn't actually get that from reading it. Mm -hmm. that, that I knew there was a lot of variability, and it could, it could depend on the provident, provident, provenance and the story and the marketing and all that. But that, I think, is important to say that if you look at the average of, you know, seven bucks or whatever it might be, that's not necessarily helpful. Whereas in the compliance market, the average price is more helpful. Yeah, because it's sold right. more as a commodity at a yeah. price. And so this was to, I'm a visual graph person. Yep. So this spoke volumes to me, but I could also see how other people just look at it and like, what does that mean? What is this red dot doing up here in the corner? You know, it's, yeah. okay. it, it's up to other folks to decide if it's providing useful information or maybe that's something that goes into an appendix or something. I don't know. I think that that's helpful having having your explanation about it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and maybe we should put that it's international. And I don't know if there's better data just in U.S. for carbon voluntary. I couldn't find anything better. No, <laughs> and it's too bad. Ecosystem Marketplace used to do this annually and they haven't done it since 2017. For forest, right. For forest. Um, but this, this is, what is this? No, yeah, this is everything. I mean, we could do the 2017 one, if that's the most recent data for forest. But this is, this is 2018 for everything. I thought the 2017 was also for everything. Yes. Right. 
this is just early months. I think this is 2018. And it's just voluntary. And, yeah, and that's the point. It's supposed to be that voluntary. Okay, I'm going to put something in here. But maybe I'll wait. So you're not so that may that time. graph may be too obtuse. I'm okay if we change it and put something else in. Well, let's leave it for now because now I understand it better. And if there's something that's more helpful, we can put drop it in there. But I think, <coughs> that, yeah, okay. You, you said it's international, this, this particular term? Yes. That would be helpful because I don't see that it says that, does it? I don't think so unless you okay. close the list. <laughs> Charts of potential variety <coughs> of prices internationally. I'll put that in there. Thanks. Okay. Um, and then s s below that, the program requirements relevant to Vermont participation. This, I think, is a section. Robert, did you? Did this, I wrote that. You wrote that. Okay. As, because the, the charge, which is missing now, was um, uh, GPS wait. signal lost. Sorry, that's supposed to be quiet. Um, just review the availability, available information on the feasibility of enrolling public and private forest land in Vermont. And so the overall thing was evaluate the current status. So I was just trying to give a current mm -hmm. status. And then you know, what affects Vermont being able to enroll. And I know everybody talks about this later on. Yeah, so I'm not sure. Okay. Um, but I, but it says to uh, review available information. So that's why I reviewed those three reports and gave their summary and tried to summarize from those reports and from the cases <coughs> referred to the factors of okay. viability. Okay. Feasibility. Um, and then, feasi okay. Feasibility analysis for Vermont and New England was also you then. Um, the next section. Yep. Yeah. Yes. Okay. That's yeah. Um, so this was helpful. Yeah. You just you summarized these re three reports, and I think this is helpful in that they are each a pair. I, I lump them as one paragraph for each one to try to make it um, easier to read. Um, and also because this is the beginning, it was before you put in all, all that introductory stuff. That's where I. I started explaining voluntary versus uh, yeah. compliance market and additionality and whatever because it's how they meet those criteria that changes and affects Vermont. So I guess that was another question I had is whether you all felt like it was helpful to have a an appendix or some kind of key somewhere that that a definition key. A That's what I was going to glossary. Yeah, that was on my list. I thought we should have a glossary because a lot of this stuff that's in the introduction right now starts off super basic, and it feels like it should really start more with our mission and our process and what yeah. we did and that kind of stuff, and just defining carbon sequestration and forest offsets and stuff. <coughs> that I was trying to do that briefly there, but kept thinking we need it. A glossary and maybe even a list of acronyms. Yeah. Okay. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Another <laughs> six pages. So the important, most important contribution. I mean, yeah. I mean, it gets to Mark's question of like, what are those international? What are the markets? And then they're they're like ACR and blah blah yeah. blah. And what does that mean? Um, so okay. And I'm sure everybody defined it at the beginning, and then everybody just started using acronyms again. So wherever you drop into the report, it's like, yeah, it's ACR versus BCS. Yeah, so it would be helpful to have a place you can flip to and be like, oh, that's right, that's what it is. Okay. Um, so who wants to send me one of those so that I can put it in? <laughs> well, I wonder, uh, does anyone, might someone know, Jim, Robert, for so, example, does the, the VLT Keaton report have a story that we might kind of borrow from? Right. I need to take a look. And then we could we could modify it and update it with our stuff and it's not been done before. Yeah, we shouldn't have to invent it. Yeah, that yeah. right. seems that's true. Yeah. Um. Okay, and then this on top of page eight, I created this this sort of chart and I was try I almost put it into a table. I was trying to figure out how to make it, but this seemed really important. The factors affecting the financial viability of carbon projects in the Northeast. The size, the stocking, the, um, the specific provisions of any conservation easements, availability, you know, there are the, all these things. This seemed really important to me to be able to explain it. So I put it in a more sectioned off table. 
but it's not, I don't know, do you feel like that's effective or if it, it could go into a, a different, I was trying to also be efficient in how I was doing it. So, um, yeah, I had, the, I had that all written out as words and then I started making yeah. bullets and you put it in a table. And I think if that's the closest thing to a finding in the section that I wrote, and I think that's something that we as a group should look at and say, are those really the factors that affect the viability? Because I think that is important because that points to the policy thing. So if it's price, how can we change price? Right. Or demand, how can we change that? Is it size? So the should we idea, look at So the idea of a table that sort of summarizes is good, and we'll, but we'll need to get back to confirming that those are they. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's mm -hmm. something that the whole, everybody should look at yeah. and say, is that it? Great. In fact, I think, so, it, I think the fact different. that they came to Ruth as this list is important to me to recognize that at least she, that's she, what she got, got the main pieces out of it. So. <laughs> I was like, this seems important. I'm going to put a box around it. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, Bill's report does include the uh, list of the, all the acronyms. Yeah. Okay. So we can it has acronyms right at the beginning, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, I could send that. That's the Keaton report. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Um, yeah. Copy that right here. Which all of you mentioned the Keaton report. That's clearly a, a it, it's important. Sort of like we could just put a new cover on that <laughs> <laughs> and add some recommendations. <laughs> yeah. Fortunately, someone did a lot of work for it. Yeah. Well, that's why I think linking to it so we can be like, oh, here, and it has a nice cover. It's yeah. pretty. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. So we can come back to this table and, and whether or not this is where it should be or it should be someplace more prominent, I don't know. But um, And then, then below that, in addition to the publications, there have been several projects in Vermont. And I started to just list them. Um, but then I realized some of these aren't. So I guess, Jim, this is a question for you. There's the Nature Conservancy's Working Woodlands Initiative. Mm -hmm. And then there's the Burnt Mountain and Cold Hollow to Canada aggregation. That's your thing. Mm, no, so they're no. two separate things. They're then. two separate yeah, things. Yeah, so Burnt Mountain is a single property project. And he was referencing in his update earlier yes, today. That's okay, and okay. do you have, so this links to something here. Somebody provided this link. The growing, it's a VPR. Yes. That was me. Yeah, I just threw some stuff in there. And, okay. and, and so again, this is, if we're under charge one, it's review of avail available information, including review of existing feasibility analyses. And I kind of took those cases as being a pilot. So yeah, we have documents where people sort of model, and then we have projects where people have tried to make it happen. We could decide as a group those projects belong somewhere else in the report, but I was just thinking if we're reviewing existing feasibility analyses, I think one of the reasons, Jim, you guys did that was to figure out if it's feasible right. and a model, not just because you wanted to do your own carbon project. Okay. And so we can just decide whether we want to list them there or something. <coughs> okay. And it also fits with this available technical assistance programs developed by other states and organizations. So TNC, I believe, is trying to help people yes. do this. We have that whole, we have a whole program, program doing to that. do that. And I did not describe it here. So that would kind of belong here unless it's somewhere else. And I don't Okay, so I guess clarification on what this list should be. I thought it was a list of essentially what you said, pilot programs, similar, like your, the Burnt Mountain one, the Newberry College one. I wasn't sure how many there were. And, the and then there were, Canada. and the Cold Hollow to Canada. Yeah. Well, cold um, Hollow. Yeah. Cold, cold, cold Hollow. I thought I put in a link to that, but maybe I didn't. You, you put in a link to yeah. Burnt Mountain and Cold Hollow to Canada. It's to a BPR okay. thing. So I wasn't sure. and. I wasn't sure. I just threw them in as sources. I and the TNC Working Lands Initiative, Working Woodlands Initiative, is that also a project, or is that? There's a, a program of TNC that has multiple carbon projects that have been developed around the country. Oh, so this isn't specific to Vermont, no, right. other than our project being linked to that program. Okay. It's just to confuse things. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and so that gets at C in that. You know, other states and organizations assisting private landowners. And okay. Yes. Oh, okay. So this this also goes into another. Yeah, that's in the next section. So 
Okay. This 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 section is great to have, but it, it needs some more thought and probably yeah we should you know I think I think probably Cecilia maybe I would propose that it, you you might just think it through and we'll, well the reason I it's kind of looks the way it is is because I don't know the details of the projects I didn't know where things stood and so I was researching online and I couldn't figure it out and I was like well Jim would know the up to date okay. he just told us you know and well, why Jack would know the up to date and he sent you a case study yeah so why don't we just if you could give me a list of the ones you know about of the projects in and, Vermont. In Vermont or the region, okay, um, that are that are like pilot programs. Then we can drop it in into the next section, uh, technical assistance, and and um, and and then if I was going to suggest that we do the Millbury College Redwood project in the appendix, the sort of write up that Jack provided. Yep. It's not in here yet. I didn't put it in yet. And then maybe if you want to have the Cold Hollow or the Burn Mountain one, sorry, Burn Cold as a an appendix too yes do you want to yeah. give me just a two or three paragraph summary of it i think i think also what's missing and i annotated it but it looks like in your wisdom you edited it out which is good because all it was was a, a comment that um this this thing also talked about to help um, us know where you're referring to Cecilia. Right, right where we are where um, in addition to the publications listed above or yeah, yeah so in that so I did what I could about you know reviewing available information on the feasibility of enrolling Vermont in yeah. carbon sequestration projects the next thing was B was uh, examples of project development on public land in other states and so I had a line in here that this is where we should put the list that you had about public lands it may not fit here if we're not doing it by um, charge. Mm -hmm. So all that stuff may be somewhere else. But that's, I had a line in there saying we should drop um, uh, Robert's list in here. And then. Oh, yeah, I, did, I didn't know what you were referring to, so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was like, I don't know what that means. Right, right, right. So the question is, you know, in order to meet this charge, you know, there's the public lands examples, <coughs> and then there's technical assistance from other states and organizations. And so I, yeah. the next section goes into everything I know about other states. It doesn't include non-state organizations like TNC. Mm -hmm. So we might want to include that, and then we just might want to list public lands. <coughs> But if yes. we're not organizing it by Well, charge. I didn't change the or order, just to be <coughs> clear. I didn't change the order of the stuff that you had in here. I just was trying to re-title things into titles that made more sense, okay. at least to me. <laughs> so maybe they don't make sense to other people. But um, So I combined the ca carbon forest offset projects on public land and technical assistance to private landowners because your section did talk about both. Right. So we're asked to cover both. Yeah, so uh, if it were me, I would break it back out again because there was a specific line item that says public lands. And then the other one is a specific line item that says technical assistance to private landowners. Um, there, is a, there is still a section on public lands that I believe you guys wrote that is still in here. Yeah. yeah. Um, so a lot of it was ordering it. I was thinking okay. about moving your stuff up to be this is about what other states have, this is specifically asking us to review what uh, what has been other in, in states other states did about private land owners right yeah, it's setting the stage for has anyone else done anything like right, this right but you do talk about in that section there were some like for example was it georgia yeah i think they have just, public and private right um, and i just wanted to be clear i mean they they opened it up to all kinds of landowners okay so Technical assistance for but they private developed it so people could participate okay. for projects instead of saying, okay, in so we might just want one that states. says examples of public land, and then the second one is technical assistance um, for private landowners, and again, that's by other states and organizations. Right. Just because of the, yeah. Again, I don't know if we want to be stick with for falling, but it's like B and C are two different things. This is public lands and that's private lands. Okay. The public land section I think you guys cover. And we maybe if we well, want to keep a, it. But it's, it's again it's in a different context of the charge. It's a separate charge. Okay. One charge is what have other states done in this regard? And then later we get to what do we think about how could this work for, for state lands in, in Vermont? Okay. And so, I, I think I put in a couple of sentences too, credit predating it or whatever, saying that. It doesn't actually matter that much to the carbon markets, whether it's public or private. 
mm -hmm. with the possible exception of that one part in compliance markets that's worried about federal um, easements. Oh, um, right. But but I think if we want to talk about the public land, I think one of the things that came out of one of the meetings was it really doesn't matter. There's nothing that really precludes public lands from being in these markets, um, in the voluntary markets. Okay, so just let's step back for a second. So that, <laughs> so your section that starts on the top of page nine. Yep. The forest and it's, it's part, it, the forest climate and community research group led by Dr. Right, right, Cecilia right, right. Danks. And we can get rid of all that. I just didn't no, know that's fine. That's fine. Um, the title for that section. So that section I left mostly intact. I might have edited it a tiny bit. But so what? What do you want the title to be for well, that? Well, that would be addressing the issue of um, tef state state run technical assistance programs for private landowners. Okay. Mm -hmm. Other state. Other oh, state, state yes, yeah, so okay. Vermont outside. Okay, thank you. And may I also suggest? Yeah, please. Back I took the liberty of putting together an outline because I have to think in in outlines. <laughs> um, and in looking through it, uh, I think your suggestion, Ruth, um, to maybe maybe you won't have to break it apart because the title really suggests the public and private, but the content doesn't. But if you were to move it up to um, that section on the other states' programs, up to follow the compliance market overview and the voluntary market overview, it serves as a really good um, launch into these are other programs in other states, and then move into program requirements relevant to Vermont participation, feasibility analysis for Vermont and New England, um, the case for offset projects in Vermont. I just feel like it might feel less disconnected and, mm -hmm. and maybe land a little bit better in setting people's mind and framework that I think you were seeking to do, Cecilia. And can you, that can you give them. Senator Hardy a look at that, maybe? Yeah, if you yeah. have it written down somewhere, do you, could you just... Uh, can you or take a picture of it and send it to Take a picture of the outline? And yeah, or just... <laughs> just re <laughs> right right on that or Because yeah. one, of, one of the things that I was, that I was trying to get at, I, 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 I know we have to do this charge that... <laughs> for whatever reason, just the way it was written in the law. Um, but uh, it, the order doesn't seem right, right to me. And so I was trying to figure, and I, so if you have a different order, that mm -hmm. would be helpful to see. Um, so um, yeah, and then maybe the Jim's list of pilot projects would go somewhere else too, because this seems like a weird place to lump it in. Th that's really in the context of Vermont, the pilot programs. Right, because there was one thing about feasibility for Vermont, you know, it was yeah. review of existing, um, uh, what do they call it, right. information and analysis specific to Vermont. And there's a lot of repetition in those yes. things, so that's one of the reasons there's a lot of repetition in the report, because you were all trying to answer kind of the same question, because it kept getting asked the same way. Right. So I, I don't think we need to, to repeat Constantly, right. and so I think <coughs> I think we can take the liberty to say right. we're going to address it in a separate section in a different order and not repeat. And that's, that's okay. Fine. I just wanted to make sure everything was covered, and I realized in editing out the examples of the public land disappeared, and, okay. the, and the message that you can do carbon voluntary carbon on public lands, which some people might not even. Um. <laughs> yeah. And then the, the specific examples of other states. <laughs> um, okay, so your section is more or less the same. I, I just cleaned up some of the language, and I just see I missed something because there's a on top of page ten. Yeah, and it's not so much about I w it, the subheading wouldn't be forest carbon offset projects. There's not that many projects listed. It's really state approaches to facilitating landowners to participate in carbon market projects. Okay. And, and the, one of the things that are, I wanted to make clear is that there's really two angles, particularly now. There's this past influence on let's get them in the carbon market, and now a number of states are like, well, how can we just fund them to do carbon sequestration? Mm -hmm. um, and not mu not necessarily through the carbon markets where you, so I was trying to bring that out there mm -hmm. in that section. Um, no, I think your section is it's, it's good, it's helpful. Um, and then at the bottom of page 11, there's another subsection, the case for offsets 
projects in Vermont. Did you also write that? No, I think that came from the um, the next charge. <coughs> okay. Right, that's charge two. Is this Robert? The economic. Enemy. That's Robert. Sorry. Okay, and then. Um, okay, yeah. So then, the, a lot of this was my highlighting was um, just the the. What are they called? The the. Um, Links and citations, citations and stuff that we need to get. Um, but now I now I know the direction we're going. I can do that. Um, and then again, the table three. Um, That's straight from the Keaton VLT. Which the page twelve. Page twelve. No, that's completely of my construction. Ah, mm. cool. So yeah, I think we should. S oh, that's 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 uh, current use. So there was uh, overlap in this section and then the section that Keith and Michael did in, on current use, um, which I haven't gone through. I just plopped it in here, Michael, after I got it from you. Understood. Um, but, uh, so, but there is overlap between this section and that section. So I don't know if it's just overlap in content or if there's any if it contradicts each other, I don't know. It doesn't necessarily contradict. Um, I mean, I think it's appropriate to cover it in the one place, and then there's a sort of different context by the charge in the other. Keith, would you want to add something? I think that they complement each other. I don't think that right. there are contradictions. I think this is really pointing towards the uh, evaluating the um, coverage and the and the basically the um, tax burden as it relates to, to timber harvesting and UVA. Uh, it's not, not covered again in charge five. I was searching for a way to make the economic case, and rather than keep it broad, I kept it narrow, mm -hmm. and I chose to focus on one example. Can I just, you mentioned, you, you called it UVA. Use, use value appraisal <laughs> I know. Is, is current use. Sorry, when I first started pledge. to read it, I was like, why are they talking about University of Virginia all the time? <laughs> <laughs> and so um, I have always heard it called the current current use. That's, the, that's the sort of, um, that's the, 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 the common name. Yeah. The scientific name, if you will, is the use value appraisal program. That's how it exists in statute, et cetera. Right. So it's UVA. But people call it current use. They call it land use. They have some other less what, less what appropriate should we names. What call in here? What is do you want? I to think call the better acronym is UVA. UVA. Okay. And that's the custom, and so okay. it's it's use value appraisal. It's often said use value appraisal, also known as current use parentheses UVA, mm -hmm. and then you use UVA from there. On. Okay, then I will do that in the first one. Um, Sorry for that. Um, Go Cavaliers. Yeah, I, was, I thought it was very funny. And I, I kept, that's not the first time that's come up. And then, through. well, I was like, do they mean UVM? And <laughs> so, yeah, exactly. Um, Maybe we need a glossary. Just don't yeah, we can put it in the glossary. Yeah, exactly. Just don't call it tax break. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> okay. Um, so Robert's table, I'm glad to know that you, you created this table. So when I can put at the bottom, yeah. No, you know, yeah. Your, I mean that. I, um, cite you. I can certainly cite. The, I think I thought I did, but I can certainly cite the sources of the information, which are basically the annual reports to the legislature. Okay. Okay. Um, and in the glossary, um, a definition of stumpage would be helpful. Mm -hmm. that I think that you are all comfortable yeah. with that term, but some people. I I'm now comfortable with it. Price, price paid it. to the landowner. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> For the standing to. Um, okay. Um, okay. And then exhibit one, which is now actually not exhibit one, and this I'll highlight to make sure, because I think it's now three, maybe four, on the top of page thirteen. Yeah, and that has yeah that has a citation attached to it. That is, is from the. The use value report to the legislature for probably 2017 or 18. Right? Yeah, we had another legislative report required, and that's which really lays out. Well, the, no, this is the annual report from oh, the, the tax department. Tax department yes, report. 1980 to 2018. Okay, so not five. Well, that goes down to that. Okay, I didn't see that. All right. Okay. 
Um, okay, and then I also. Um, on, on page 11, I think it's that where we are, 13, page 13, I, I enumerated these, um, this again seems important and it's also related to the other thing that I put in a chart, the, that, what, that, that um, returns are, very, are dependent on acres, existing stock, contractual agreements and market prices. This is repetitive of the other table that I had in here. And is it, I guess, is it worth repeating again at, at, like this or is one table that shows this? I think you can refer to the, to the table that you developed and, okay. and ditch this in my opinion. Okay. Just, just wanted to. Yeah, no, that's fine. It, because the other table actually has six factors and this has four. So I guess that gets back to Michael's. <laughs> the only problem with that is that my next paragraph addresses these, the, a couple of these points, uh, or all of the points in the, in the list. So. Yeah, the other one is more of a summary table. Yeah. Look yeah. At, at the report that you're citing and two other reports. It can probably stay in there and be duplicative. Okay. Duplicative. Okay. So it explains it in more detail. That's what I was hoping. All right, I'll just put a note to myself. In. And then, when you say our analysis supports this, number six. Whose analysis was that? Yeah. Yeah, and that this was a, the question of what, what, who is me and us and, and what, I wasn't what sure whether it cites something number six but I can't figure out where number six is so the, it's the end notes for this section really uh, so that's where they were they're still in here they're just maybe not in the same place there. okay I page 17 out. yeah uh, so there's uh, there is um, there's a footnote to that. It's not citing so much as explaining. Division of property valuation review annual report to the legislature. Well, that was five. Oh, number We're six. Talking about six right. now. So it, uh, if it were me, I would take that and put it in. It's really important. In I would pop it up into the narrative. Yeah. Um, well, that was one of my questions to, to ask the group. Was great. Nowhere do we really mention the level of activity there is in the northern states. And I think that's supposed to go in that status thing up front. Yeah, that would make sense. What projects are there. Um, okay, I'm going to just put it back up in the text. This is number six. Okay. Number, yeah. Footnote six on okay. page 17. Yeah, it could go back up where Robert refers to it, but maybe we should be listing those projects in the appendix, I don't know, or I'm not sure I have nothing to get the into that level. Yeah. I think just, I, for me, it's like the level of activity, not necessarily individual specifics. Okay. And, and so you can, we're seeing what's happening in the Northeast versus what has happened in Vermont. Yeah, exactly. Right. But it seems like that goes in the status <clears throat> section. I don't know if it goes in the economic section, mm. but it's supporting the size you're talking about. Yeah, I agree. I think it goes in the status section. <clears throat> okay. I just put it back up in the in the actual text, but maybe reading through it and can figure out where it goes. But okay. Um, and then um, again, exhibit. Which not two probably, but this the green chart at mm -hmm. the top of fifteen. Um, do people feel like this is a helpful visual? You want to explain it, Robert? Well, ma mainly it shows activity. The only problem with it is it doesn't show the most recent activity, and that's where you would see significant jumps over 2017. I'm pretty sure. So um, it shows a trend. It's. Um, probably could use more description. Um, I guess I was hoping I refer to it. 
The man for, in the paragraph on page 14, I say, second in large part because of the success of the California Compliance Program, the demand for voluntary offsets has grown and the chart supports that. Um, so it, it's probably not essential. It does, it's not as clear as I'd like, but it is evidence. Yeah, what do people think? Should we keep that? Well, I would ask you, Robert, and your point that it's not as clear as you'd like. Is it is it clear enough to be helpful? And if if not, if if yes, it stays in my view. If not, it should not. Be I would pose that question to the group because to right, me it's right. fascinating. But everybody else. <laughs> I would both keep it in then. Okay. Um, Happy to hear a strong argument why it should go. Like, it, it may be helpful. Again, I, I was trying to put something other than just words in here, and if I thought I had something that would help paint the picture, I see. I think it does that. I think it shows yeah. trends that help us explain what's going you, on. So you, I, I would, I'm with the chair that we should leave it. Okay. I'm fine with that. I, I'm just wanting to go through all the visuals. I did take out the one which was titled Greta Bounce. Oh, you did? Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, I think it might be controversial I don't know maybe that's not the right word but evoke evoke maybe yeah yeah, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. yeah it was it was intended to be topical yeah yeah no I think it I think it, it it's convincing but I also just didn't want it, it I didn't want to sort of get into that unnecessarily mishigash. attract a yes. of, of uh, a distracting kind yeah. of commentary yeah exactly so um, that's why I, I took it out um, fair enough uh, everybody then, good is that okay? Okay. Um, the this next section, the ecosystem marketplace, and um, I, that wasn't linked or cited. It is anyways. cited earlier. Is it okay? Mm -hmm. Is there a link that I could just link to it? Yeah, I think it's probably in, in the those bibliography footnotes. Okay. Um, I think I might have cited the same report, you did. but I yeah. just clicked on some of these links and they don't seem live to me. But it could be my computer. They're still highlighted, but they're not clicking for me. Um, are you on control? Are you yeah. on? Oh, I didn't control click on the line. So this section that's still in, in italics, is this just a um, copying part of the report from the ecosystem yes. marketplace no. into here? It is a quote. OK, so I, I was thinking we should just link to it and not re it at all. Is I that? Mean, yeah, not only is it, yeah, I'm fine with that. It, uh, Jim mentioned that parts of it in his piece as okay. well. Okay, so, so I'm going to... So we'll go with a link to the Ecosystem Marketplace report. Is that right? And I'll just put it in the hot link, link and, and then we'll put it in the bibliography yeah. instead of restating this right here. And um, Okay. Everybody so good? I'm, I'm going to delete that section right now. And that will cut down to maybe... 30? 30. Well, we went back up to 32 pages somehow, so... Yeah, this will go down to 31 again. No net loss. <laughs> I know exactly. So We're at 31 pages, Michael. Before you get delete crazy there, oh, no! Senator. <laughs> the, um, I can the, still undo. The inset, quick, quick, the, the buttons, are, the, the bullets where are italicized, those are the quote. But then there's a paragraph that starts with word demand at the bottom that's also italicized. After the last bullet, I did not delete that. Okay, okay. thank you. <laughs> oh, so, only the indented bullet. Only stuff. indented. I only, yeah. yeah demand in the voluntary market is expanding. 16. I, I prices and I can I, I think I might have italicized that because it seemed important. Fine. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, so that that. What over the last couple of years, it's gotten even sort of hotter to buy that. these voluntary offsets. Yeah, so yeah. that seemed like mm -hmm. a. Maybe a finding, maybe, if we decide that. Okay. Um, so, I'm just going to say link to this. Okay. Um, okay, in this, in this paragraph that starts, carbon offsets are becoming more established and accepted. Robert, that's your paragraph. It says down here, in, in, if you go into the middle of it, from a statewide policy perspective, facilitating the flow of private capital into the revenue stream for landowners may mitigate the impact of increases in property taxes and reduce the amount of land removed from 
UVA program and ultimately develop. I thought there was a chart earlier that you had included that, uh, or an argument that was made earlier that there's actually more land being put into the UVA program. Overall, the, I think the enrollment is increasing, but there are also lands being removed. And uh, it's not totally clear from the annual reports what happens to those lands. So we don't know if they're being removed and developed and that's contributing to the loss of forest land. Um, so yeah, I, I think that I think I should review this and rewrite it. Yeah, because overall this was confusing to me because my brain was, oh, we're increasing enrollment into use value, but then here you say land is being it is being removed. So it's okay. con it contradict it sounded contradictory to me. Keith, could you uh, shed some light on it just sure. as a factual kind I think of basis? Robert's absolutely right. There's a net gain in enrollments over time, but every year there's a lot of acreage that is removed, some of which is not developed and some of which is. Okay. I, so I think the I think the statement is is still relevant and accurate if there's concerns about a perception of uh, conflict, then maybe clarify it, but I, I think it's still I can clarify. If you can just give me a sentence to plop in here and in the other place that speaks to that <laughs> phenomenon, that would be helpful. Okay. Um, and then this next section, environmental rationale. Well, that so that was the charge, right? Ecological, we had to, we had to defend the environmental case and the, and the economic case. Okay. The environmental rationale for encouraging forest carbon offset projects. Okay, I'm, I'm just I'm changing that title. Um, okay, so that was you made the financial. Now we're into the for, uh, the environmental rationale. Any, I didn't see in the report last time we we met we had this conversation about the carbon accounting and how if we were going to permit forests to be put I think you were talking you brought this up mark um, that if we we're going to put carbon uh, forests into the carbon markets that carbon sequestration is being counted in California or in wherever and that we, if we do develop a statewide carbon accounting system for Vermont, we want to ensure we're not double counting. And I didn't see that anywhere in here, and I don't know where it would necessarily go, maybe in our recommendations um, or our, our findings, I don't know, but it seemed like an important part point to me that we want to avoid <coughs> this, con uh, oh, and John, you were also talking about this too, that sort of concept of don't, don't, count. don't double count. Would it be helpful to the group for me to paraphrase how I see this point being made in this document and what its relevance is? Again, please. <laughs> yeah, because it doesn't come out in the document. Okay, mm -hmm. so let's use let's use the energy sector as a, as an example because I think it's pretty analogous. We generate a certain amount of power in this state. Private individuals do uh, with solar panels, right? Or we do it with biomass, or we do it with any way that's considered renewable. Well, those, that power generated carries a renewable energy credit with it, right? So if we then take that renewable energy credit and sell it as a, as a financial instrument to someone else in another state who's willing to pay money for it because they're not generating enough to meet their demand, then we lose ownership of that credit. We can't claim it towards our own renewable energy goals. Mm -hmm. it's, it's analogous to this. If we had a goal that said we are going to sequester X amount and we wanted to count carbon sequestered in the state, we couldn't use carbon that we'd identified and sold <coughs> somebody in California might be counting. Right. So that's the, the it, it's, we don't have such a, an accounting program here. We're not keeping track of how much the state has no, I mean, the, the comprehensive energy plan barely mentions 
forestry or sequestration whatsoever. Mm -hmm. It looks at reduce mitigate, mm -hmm. but it doesn't talk about sequestration or negative emissions at all, and we're not counting them in this state. Right. Now, should we? Then this becomes a potential issue. So I, I think we talked about last time of, of being explicit in our, I guess it would be in a finding that if we yes. were ever to go to this system, we want to make sure that things aren't double counted. Uh, if. Um, yeah. The if, yeah, it's yeah. an if, but yeah. it's still, I think, an important if to have in there because this is a lot of the criticism that I hear is, oh, you're just double counting all of this. And, and then I try to explain, no, we're not because we're not counting it at all, really. There's no, um, but people don't understand that. So I think having that explicit finding. So would it help for me to, um, I'm happy to dra draft this up, but it helped for me to use that renewable energy credit example. Does pe do people relate to that example? You could just give a one short paragraph on yeah. that, and then I can plop it in here where you think it makes sense, and then we put it up explicitly in the findings well, up front. Be yeah. Why I'm shaking my head is because you missed a critical thing, which is where it's been required by law that a certain gen amount of their electricity be generated um, with renewable energy. That's why there's a market at all for RECs. Got and it. so nobody's requiring by law right now that people are carbon sequestering a certain amount. Um, they are in California and it's sort of in Reggie, you know, supposed to be reducing things over time. So I don't know if it's, it, because I was confused when you said, well, under this system, and I'm like, what system? Mm -hmm. I mean, maybe it's just a warning that if carbon offsets are sold, then they can't be counted against any state climate mm -hmm. uh, targets because they've been, that credit has been sold to mm -hmm. somebody else trying to meet their own personal credit or their own personal objectives mm -hmm. or a state requirement or something like that. Sold and retired. Yeah. Okay. Sold and retired, right, because sometimes you sell them and just hold them thinking they'll go up in price mm -hmm. and then retire them. I, I mean, I think it's a, a it, it's definitely an if because nothing exists right now, but it's kind of heading off the criticism or heading off the confusion. And, and I think that's the way to phrase it, like, yeah. not just if, but concerns have been raised about the potential for double counting. Mm -hmm. Just go there directly and explain yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. 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 headed off in the past, yeah. basically. Yeah. So, Robert, you'll give me a paragraph and, and suggest where it might fit in here? Okay. And then we can, when we talk about the findings. Okay, okay. thank you. I guess people might not understand how registries work. I don't know if we hit that any place. I didn't in the beginning, but that's one place where you list all of them so that nobody can double count it. Um, yeah, that's that's a good point. It it's it's implied in here a lot, but I don't know that there's a specific. Yeah, I never defined it, or maybe that's something we can just put in the definitions at the end because I yeah. use the word registry in my section. Yeah, but I never really explained um, that that. Equivalent so that people can't sell the same carbon twice and they keep track so, forever if it's been retired, you know. Right. So it's, nobody can go back and do a carbon project on that piece of property um, okay. for 125 years. Yeah, I think we need to be explicit about that too, about what that means. Yeah. Okay, and then the next part is just Robert's citations, which I can clean up now that I know how we're doing it. Um, and if there's a long thing, I may just put it in the text, Robert, and not have it be a sub, like we did with that one. Um, so then the next section is marketing carbon credits. And I think, was this your section, Jim? Or Jim was it Jack. Jack? Or both? It was a little bit of both. <coughs> Speaking of Jack, just by way of update, we received, uh, Deb and I received an email from him indicating he was a little delayed, so he'll be joining us a little later than he thought, but which is going to be soon. Yes. Um, so I didn't, uh, yeah, I mean, I didn't do too much editing on it. I just kind of tried to make it consistent with the rest of the document. The, the questions I had, um, the, on page now is 18. My page numbers may have changed because I've been editing as I'm going a little bit. You, you mentioned a recent Vermont Land Trust study, the Vermont Forest Carbon. You put that in quotes. That was Bill Keaton's study. That's Keaton's study. That's the study. Okay. referring to. Okay, okay. Because that's the, the beginning of it before there's 
semicolon. And okay, I will. I will. I will, I will just okay. Yeah. Take it. <laughs> just, just if, if we could just back up a paragraph. It says voluntary market carbon market offsets are likely to be the best opportunity for both public and private landowners to sell their carbon markets. Did we want to say public and private landowners in Vermont to sell carbon credits? Maybe that's assumed, but that was assumed. It doesn't hurt to be. Explicit. And I think that would be a good clarifying okay. addition. Okay. In Vermont? Yes. Yeah, and that's, that's probably together. one that <clears throat> Senator Hardy flagged as a finding. Yeah, I think that's something that yeah, I think we, we need to agree come on. to agree on. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think the header should actually reflect that this is this section is all about marketing the carbon credits. In Vermont, I'll just add that. Okay. Um, and there's some overlap, like you explain the ex existing registries and things like that, and we can I can get rid of that once we have the other con uh, content in here. Yep. Um, the VCS slash Vera is that the same? Is Vera another name for it? They changed, they changed the name. Changed names. Names. Oh, I, I see. actually think Vera is the registry, and isn't the protocol still VCS? Oh, yeah. Is that? I don't even. We should look. Okay. <laughs> Just let me know what I should call it. Yeah. Okay. And that looks. I think it's all Vera now. I mean, I think there's a legacy impact here, but I think it's all Vera methodology. But and they don't they don't call it a VCS yeah, protocol under their registry. They may still call it that, but I don't know that it is okay. deliberate or intentional. Yeah. The problem is the rest of the world and everything <coughs> where all the documents we report on call it VCS, and so maybe that's something we do in the. In the glossary. glossary or something, explain that they just in 2018 changed their name or something. Okay. Um, so, is this still consistent that the Middlebury College one is still the only one that's got registered tradable carbon credits and yes. Navy Conservancy <coughs> is still developing? Yes. It's still fair to say you're developing it. Correct. Okay. Um, okay. Um, it's a registered product. Project, but it's not the final product. Is not you don't have to actual. We don't have actual credits, credits. to buy. Okay. Um, and the same is true for the coal hauler. Okay. Project. Is that your project too? Uh, yeah. It is led by the Vermont Land Trust, but we are partnering with them. On okay. That. And you're going to give me a list. I'm going to give you. A list. Okay. Um, And then just, I had highlighted the, the citation, which I'll make consistent. Mm -hmm. um, and then the next, I didn't have anything else really on that unless you had something you wanted to say on your section. And then the carbon market projects on Vermont State Forest Lands, this is your section, right? Yes. Okay. Um, so I have these, you had to put in here insert acreage. Do you have that acreage that you yeah. want to give me? Okay. So I can put that in there. Um, then I don't, I don't think I changed much in here. Mostly I was trying to tighten it up a little bit. Um, did you read through it? Did you have anything that? You we have, have some, but there, okay. I think there are, Becca Jane, correct me if I'm wrong, they're more of the next level of edits, edits than okay. the, are we good okay. with this organizational approach? And okay. one observation, um, the draft that was distributed on November 17th had track changes that we provided comments on. Your version doesn't appear to have accepted those track changes. It seems to be our original language. So. Oh. So I thought I had accepted all the track changes before. I Robert had a bunch in there and I accepted all of his. I don't so, think I saw your track changes. There were track changes made someone by else. someone else. To our section. Oh, yes. That was it by, by Robert? If those were probably not. Yeah, yeah. I accepted all of them. They There's don't appear to be reflected in the version that. So let's confirm and check that. Okay. Uh, and, um, then, and Cecilia had a couple in there that I could see yours. I know you said you couldn't mm -hmm. see them. But I, ex I accepted all the track changes before I made it into a Word document. Um, so. If that didn't happen, then I don't know if there's some technical thing. <laughs> We got a request, and so Ed, we have we the rules of engagement are it's the working group and and our staff is listed as technical assistance to this process. So we hold the public comment till later. So I'm the only one in this room that does not have a copy of this draft. Oh, we can get you that, uh, Deb. Can we get a, a copy? We should, sorry for that. We we don't want to keep you out of that. You can have my copy. I can look at it. It's tiny. Thanks for speaking Thank up. 
the next section is developing economies of scale and marketing and selling carbon credits. This one is really uh, repetitive. I, I'm sorry, yeah, Senator, I just paused just to be clear. So we have those, so, so you, you will confirm the changes that Robert had suggested <coughs> to this section. Yeah. And we will offer later additional yep. sort of line edits to this for consideration. Um, I, I, we nobody came back with a thing. Right, because so. right, we were just trying to let you go through your okay. overview, and we'll go back. We'll, I'm hoping we'll be able to circle back and then get into that next level of granularity in the edits. Fair okay. enough. Yep. Letting you kind of get through what you need now. Okay. That's the first pass. So the next. Okay. Thanks. That's fine. <laughs> Uh, sorry about the track changing thing. That's, of I thought they had We're doing our best. There. Everyone else. Um, the developing economies of scale and marketing and selling carbon credits. This, this section, a lot of that. Oh, this was. Is this your section, Keith? No. 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 This was. Who's this? Mine and Cecilia's, I believe. Okay. This, uh, some of it is repetitive Maybe of the section special. that we did, you did before on selling and marketing carbon credits. So I'm not sure why it was in here twice. Because we were, it follows the legislation. Just going by the charges. Okay, I might combine those two sections. Does that sound reasonable to people? Well, this, this is there a separate? So just to highlight that this, this section was supposed to look at economies of scale and marketing and selling, as opposed to just aggregating and project development. Right. And so I just want to make sure we don't lose that focus when we combine them. Um, marketing and selling being the kind of. The, the difference that what makes it a little different than elsewhere, right? Right, that makes it different than just what's a, a financially viable carbon project for for um, here is like, well, what is you know how to develop economies of scale and marketing and selling? So maybe that is covered adequately beforehand. Um, maybe we do want to combine. I'm that. not sure I answered that question. In and that's why my bullets in there are, were really just talking points for us, because I thought that was getting us towards the recommendations of what can the state do to help with the marketing and selling. If, if, if we're talking about the bullets, I mean, to me, that's, I mean, the legislature's going to have enough bullets of their own. And I don't think us as a group need to interject, here's some ideas for you. Hmm. Because to me, they're going to have enough ideas. If, if it comes I thought, that was our I thought that was part of our charge. Well, it is. So to be clear, we've been asked to evaluate existing and elsewhere and, and, and sort of all builds towards and make recommendations for how to stand up a statewide program. And, and we could decide not to make that recommendation. But I think they are asking for recommendations uh, uh, in, included. And we get to decide what those are, Mark. And so they're appropriate to be here if we agree that they should be here. And if you don't want them there, you have the opportunity to make that known and clear. And that'll be part of our deliberations on where we land with this. Fair enough? Fair enough. And there may be others who feel similarly. Well, right. Again, to, just to clarify, though, when you go back to your other section, you talked about some of the other states' activities, talking about Oregon with a uh, um, trust fund that didn't work out. These, you know, <coughs> That's something that shows you that something like that doesn't work. So again, some of these bullets, if you ask me, are similar to that trust fund that didn't work out. You know, well, the just, key is to what went wrong with that trust fund. And so, um, yeah. So the way I, re I read your bullets were that they were prompting ideas from this group. And I think um, I'm looking forward to that discussion. But I mean, I think it does have to come from the legislative portion of the study group. So. You know, uh, um, and I think we, I don't think we need to get to that. I think yeah. at this point we're just so Mark's Representative Higley has flagged that he has some concerns about including this sort of thing. I think it's fair to clarify that they're appropriate in here if we collectively deem they should be in here and which ones. And we're not there yet in our, in our process. May I ask one question? Yeah, of course. Was it your intent to list these as? Bullets to be included, or no, as these ideas were in to I, be. These were in italics, and it, with a comment to the group is, "Here's some ideas of how to in Section All Six, right, but it seems list. to relate to this mission." So these weren't ever intended to be final text. They were, they were discussion that's points, helpful. and I think I put something in about that. But <coughs> that's it, the way I took. Them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There was a line that said that was some question that you had put in here. And yeah, and I yeah. put it in italics, meaning I know you had 16 different kinds of fonts. So that, for me, was, this isn't real text. This is just ideas yeah. for us to talk about. So I think that, to your point, we'll, we'll as Michael's saying, have 
recommendations and findings, and this would probably come out of this section. Even if we agree that this is something we want to do, we would put it in the recommendation section, not in the section, I think. If and when we get to yeah. agreeing to those, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, so I will, I'm going to just highlight this whole thing, meaning that it's... But I, a lot of the stuff that Jim wrote on the aggregation part, I think, is useful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. up until the, this thing, this charge mentions marketing and selling. Right. And then the bullets below it, that's sort of temporary. Um, wait, except for the state of Vermont could help landowners participate in existing markets in several ways. The state should make sure that landowners who wish to participate. This might be on that level, too. I think that, yeah, maybe. I think that was one of Jim's offerings. Is that so one of your offerings? That was one of my offerings. Okay. So that could, but that could fit, fall into the same thing as recommendations. Yes. What could the state do? Okay. I would read it that way, okay. in that same level of this incorrect. And then, so then it's a prompt. There you go. <laughs> okay. And then the next section, the section financial incentives for Mont's use value appraisal program and maximi maximizing the value of forest land and carbon markets. This is. This is from us. This uh, is your section. And Keith, at uh, my direction, and request Keith, who's our program manager for current use, with significant help from Robert. Uh, and as I understand it, as was dropped in by Senator Hardy last night upon receipt without any change. Yeah, I didn't change it at right. all. And so the headings are even. Hasn't been. It hasn't been yeah. partified. I just put it in here. It, it, it was. Thank you for making it significantly shorter than the previous one. That did cut down, I think, five pages of the report. <laughs> but I just replaced. That's why I put it in there because I was like, "Ooh, that's so gratifying." Good. Just get rid of five pages. Good. One copy, cut, copy and paste. <laughs> so yeah, I didn't go through it. If you, if you want, I, I think my main thing is I would probably combine some of these paragraphs because they're short. And well, well, why don't, given that you haven't had a chance to get through it yet, we'll leave that for you to continue your normal editing, okay. e editing process, and we'll go from there. Okay, sounds good. Um, Including taking input from others who have who are just seen it now. Yeah, so. Just to understand, it came from us, largely by Keith, um, and um, with significant input from Robert, which we appreciate. The one thing I wanted to ask about now, because it would be helpful to get it out, sure. is your, you have a comment in here, at least it's attributed to your name. Robert had asked about this. Yeah, so that's, that was, I just included it. Uh, it's, I don't think it's in here anymore, right? Oh, it's still there. It so that was there. just to be clear of where that came from, that it was, I think, making it clear that it originally, you thought the idea originated with Cecilia. Okay. And we just, and we're just attributing it to her and making, wanting to make sure, for one, that she thinks that's accurate because we found it to be incredibly important. It what she told us purpose. about how, yeah, how UVA, this is a fundamental thing, I think, right? Cecilia, maybe you could yeah, do that's, more talking about it. It looks right like now. that's my whole email about it. So right. <laughs> and I wrote it, I think that's still accurate. Yeah, it's the idea that if, if you're asked to quantify that carbon in exchange for um, tax benefit, tax benefit or, or a cost share agreement or anything, then it could be thought of that that carbon is already sold. So that would set the baseline higher, you know, making projects less eligible for credits. Those that are in that program. Yeah, yeah. and um, Vermont, California, I understand, is, I won't go into it, it's too much detail, but um, at any rate, that's something to. Thank you, and so for the purposes of the document, it's only, it, as far as I'm concerned, it can be deleted as the, a comment. The it was comments. only there in case someone said, where, why is this here, where did this come oh, from? Changes that expand on the purpose of to include carbon could make it appear. <laughs> to me, when I... Jack. Um, if you think it should change, to say, please well, guide us. Jack, is that you? Jack? Hello? Yeah, hi, it's Jack. Okay. Hi, Jack. Welcome. <laughs> Thanks for joining Hello. us. We are here and cranking away as uh, Senator Hardy is leading us through um, um, the dr latest version three draft that she had sent around this morning uh, at a kind of a high level of organization and uh, not in the wordsmithing necessarily just yet. 
And we are on page 23 of 31, if you'd like to get oriented. And uh, appreciate Great. Thanks. Thanks. You, you bet. Thanks for joining. We appreciate you're on the phone. So, you know, I'll try to keep in mind you're there, but you do your best to sing out when you need attention, please. Yes, I will do that. Thanks. Uh, Cecilia, continue, please. Uh, so the key things that they were highlighting what, that would make a project ineligible would be um, specifying it, payment for that, and the time requirement that's associated with that, so how long that car. Anyway, so that might be more detailed than you want in here, but what this, if we just delete the comment entirely, then it just says it may make them ineligible. And I think a better way to think of it is any changes to the program that specified carbon out, carbon outputs um, should be, the wording should be reviewed to make sure it doesn't affect it. Okay. Because it would be easy enough to just run it by the protocol people and say, is this a problem that the legislature is actually thinking about putting Thank something you. in? Keith, are you able to track that and maybe take a crack at drafting something to send to Senator Hardy for us? Yes. Thank just you. on the all section right. that's just on added that. yes. in purpose? So you might not that. want all that pink stuff. That no, I assume, we, I assume we'll just change the text in the body of the document. Right, and to okay. say something that it would be important to run any changes in that legislation by the people who are in the protocols in order to determine if it affects the eligibility of private land owners for the state car markets. Something like that. And I can send you wording if you want. Thanks, Cecilia. And thanks, Keith. We're rolling. Okay, so I'm going to delete this comment because yes. then it will make the. Because, uh, yeah, you guys have such tiny font because that was in there, so. Is that the only yeah. comment? I think it is. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. And then, Sorry. Yeah. Well, we just, it's That's a really important point. Though. Right. It's, 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 it's yeah. incredibly fundamentally important. And so we wanted to make sure, I appreciate Keith flagging it because we wanted to make sure everyone knew what was going on when we say it may not be eligible. One more from Keith. Uh, I just want to add that I think because of the scale of UVA, uh, evaluating not just the compatibility of the program today, but potential changes, at the, that's the intent of this, yes. this part of it. Um, Robert, Cecilia, other experts evaluating the accuracy of that. I'm not a carbon expert, um, but if if these don't seem to be as precise or accurate as they need to be, um, make the changes necessary to make this up. Can I just request that when you guys are sending me content, you remind me what it is. I wrote little notes to myself that just say, this was supposed to go into section X. Got it. That would be helpful. You can't read mine? <laughs> I'm gonna, I know I'm going to be like, wait, wait, what was this? Go back. Um, okay. But I have a note in here that Keith will, will send me something, okay? All right. Learn more about the NRCS programs. I. Is that a note to self, or is it's that? It's a note? hot link. If you for each okay. of those other programs, it's just a link to you can get more information. It's, it's okay. I'm gonna just hot link the actual word the NRCS. There you go. As, as you yeah, see okay. fit. Yeah. All right. Um, okay, and then below this section are a couple more um, uh, citations that I'll clean up. Um, just to make them consistent. And then the charge six, which is what Robert sent us. Which we have in hard copy. Before we jump to charge six. Great. The bottom of page 26 is another TK4. That's a, that's a Keith note that. Strike it. Where is this? The bottom of 26. Just beneath the conclusion. It's a footnote. TK4 at the beginning of the project yeah. to strike that whole thing? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Is there another copy for Ed, knowing that he's in the room? Can we get one now? Uh, additional copy of this charge six. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you, sir. So this is where I summarize my charge six. Um, so, and also, just to be clear, the reason I sent out multiple versions of it and just said this is version one, version two, version three, is so you could see the ch yeah. changes 
doing all the editing and track changes would have made it impossible to follow and read. We're incredibly so just, grateful. Is that, and we're going with sure what works. Okay. As long as, from my perspective, as long as nobody's whining okay. and there's no, we don't run afoul of public, you know, it, uh, meeting laws. Yeah. We'll go with whatever works for you because you're the one willing to do this. So thank you. Somebody had to do it, so I, I said I would do it. Um, so I mean, I'm, I'm okay with previous versions of the draft being put out onto our website too. If people want that, that was another. I didn't know if we should do that or not, or just have the final version out there because I know there was some. I sense as they, as long as we there, we can make them available, say upon request. We're good. Okay. okay. But we don't want to confuse people either. Yeah. It, mostly me. <laughs> we're, 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 right. Well, and that's also why I have draft across all of them. To Absolutely. Sure it was clear that nice. that was. You're doing great. <laughs> okay. Thank you. All right. All right. Charge six. Sure. So, um, so I struggled as, as as most of us probably have with trying to pull out what were the salient pieces that we um, that we really um, arrived at and. Also, what's missing? What what key points did we sort of gloss over, or didn't we include? And um, and then you know, how could we pull this together into something that reflected a response to Charge Six? And Charge Six is <clears throat> review how to structure and regulate a statewide program and facilitate enrollment. So this charge personally always gave me a little bit of hesitation because it seemed like what was being asked by the drafters in the legislature was a statewide program that kind of looked a little bit like current use or UVA and um, it had an enrollment process and the state kind of handled this sort of thing and and I think that um, you know in our in the whole lead up to where we are now it, I hope it's become pretty apparent that that's not as simple as it might have seemed to the legislature at the start yeah. so so I began thinking about all the points we've made and um, and and uh, and I guess it was Cecilia's. I didn't know who made the comments, but Cecilia, I thought you're opening this up to ideas about what what could be our course of action from here, our recommendations, or what would it look like. That really gave me a lot of liberty to feel like I could put something down on paper. So that's what I did with charge six here that was distributed to you. It's three pages, um, but I wanted to. I think I can summarize its basic points really pretty quickly. Please do. So. Um, I began to think in terms of some entity, which I don't know if it's public, private, some kind of quasi. I mean, I, I could think of examples in state organization that I don't really know a lot about. Um, Vita comes to mind. It's not a half state, half private, you know. Um, but anyway, I don't know what really the form of this entity would be, but I certainly see that we have strengths in the people that are involved in this program to date the Nature Conservancy, the Land Trust, the Department of Forest Parks as being the primary players here, each bring strength to this idea of, of facilitating enrollment. And from the point of view of the Land Trust, what I see as their strength is they're working through this aggregation piece. And if they can figure that out, that is huge because nobody else has really done it. And they have the contacts of landowners and they have the legal expertise and they've worked through an actual project. And so to me, there's a place for them there. Um, the Nature Conservancy, I've learned through, through this group, has uh, actually is offering services to VLT to market their carbon. You know, that's tremendous that you'd be willing to do that and that, that the power of that organization can be brought to a little state like Vermont on a single project. You know, I think that's a tremendous resource. So I think that the, you know, the credibility that TNC brings, the ability to market these credits, the access to possible capital to fund a program, to me, that's a big piece. The third piece is the department. And from my point of view, the department can bring quite a lot of technical expertise if they just had the capacity to do that. And I don't think that's outside the realm of reason because there used to be an analyst in the Department of Forest Parks and Recreation. There used to be a lot of things. And he retired. <laughs> and I was, you know, I went through a couple of rounds of trying to help find a replacement, and there just wasn't a person out there that fit. But um, but I see a role for the department. Or in, the money to pay for it. Or the money to pay for it. Uh, I see a role for the department to be able to provide, um, first of all, outreach, which we've all talked about, information <coughs> and outreach to, to landowners. Because to me, county foresters are the sort of first order of information transfer to a lot of landowners. <coughs> and, you know, you've already done it with the, with the modern wood program. You, you know, you have a, a track record of being able to bring information to the public. So 
as, as these ideas began to form, I realized that we were, what we were talking about was, and, and we, I guess maybe I'll step back once more. We've talked about the role of the developer in bringing a project to market, right? So the developer is the guy that sort of swoops in, you click something on their website and you're interested and they contact you and they ask all these questions to qualify you, pre-qualify you as a candidate. And if they decide that you actually can make money for them, they'll say, Okay, we'll do a feasibility study, and they'll come out, and they'll look at your land, they may do some inventory, they'll put that all together, they'll talk about it with you, they'll go to the next step, okay, we're going to do this, we'll do all the paperwork, we'll get the listing process and started, and then we'll uh, schedule a formal inventory that's more intensive, we'll take those data, we'll develop them, we'll model them, we'll do all of the technical work. And then they, they hire the, you know, they do a whole bunch of other things, hire the verifier, go through the whole process, record the final documents, do all the annual reporting. So that's the role of the developer, typically. But what we're talking about here with these partners that I just mentioned is removing a whole bunch of the services that are typically provided by these developers and putting them into our control. And at the same time, I see that as enhancing the feasibility of these projects because most developers don't do this on a fee-for-services basis. They do it for a portion of your carbon proceeds. And we've talked about this. It's not small. And I'm always interested in trying to keep more of that money in our hands and less of it in the pockets of venture capital, you know? So, so I'm beginning to envision this entity that coordinates the activities of the partners that we have here that do things really well and take some of those tasks away from the developers. And then for those tasks that we need the technical experience of a developer, contract, you know, put together a portfolio of, of potential projects, do all of the pre-project vetting, and say, these people are all signed up, they want to go. What's your price to take them from this point to the point of actually listing and, and um, submitting information to the registry or, or, or regulators? So, um, so that, to me, is a potential model, if that makes sense, that the state could consider. Now, clearly, this is um, not completely thought through, <laughs> and that, <laughs> that um, you know that any of those partners may have big objections to this big idea. But but I do see this as a potential way to address this charge, and at least put something out. That <coughs> seems to be the logical conclusion of, of a lot of the pieces that we've pulled together in the last few months. And hey, uh, Robert. Yes. I would I would um, agree with that just based on our experience. I think we probably had. Uh, close to a year of just trying to figure out whether we wanted to do this and how it worked in, in our case. And I think had those kinds of services been available um, in a, you know, an organized fashion and a, a reasonable or no cost, um, we would have been along, <clears throat> we would have moved along much further faster than, than we did. And I think that would be valuable to others who are wondering if they should go ahead with some, some kind of a project. So, I really appreciate that you listed all these things a project developer does, and I feel like I tried to hit that in one of my sections and didn't cover them all, and that's almost worth the table because what we're talking about is breaking down and taking some yes. of those pieces and figuring out where we can put this yes. uh, across the state. I, I have an, another concern, so that's sort of the stemming from the idea of, well, the project developer takes too much of the pie, so that makes more of the projects infeasible or, and people don't know how to get started. I think another constraint is the time um, that people might not be willing to commit 40 <coughs> years or 100 years, and so you'll have the VLTs and the um, Nature Conservancy and Middlebury, people with really long time horizons that are used to lawyers and are not concerned about a 40 year or 100 year commitment. So I think that's going to be a challenge. I think that, I, I don't know whether we should say that someplace, but acknowledge that that's going to limit the number of people who want to participate. And I do say that. Or is there a way to make that less scary? Yes. Um, Absolutely. And that could be our role, too. So I've done, I did two, I did Sorry, one I thing. Sorry, I the whole thing. No, no. So probably covered it all. <laughs> Excuse me. I did one thing the, last week, which is I called one of my co colleagues in the project development world. And I said, what are the major objectives that you hear from people when you, when, when they express initial interest and then you talk about things and they Object say. Objections. Objections. Sorry, objectives. 
objections. Objection. So oh, where, objections. Do, where do people choke? <laughs> and, and he basically said yes, all of the things that you just mentioned, the, the length of the time in the program, the commitments that have to be made, the, the marginal, feasi marginal financial feasibility, the timing of payments, all those kinds of things, they come up as regular. And, and I think that if this entity were properly capitalized, that then the first, you know, the first initial tranche of projects would ideally repay any investors who came up with some upfront money, whether that's the taxpayers of the state or some private investor group or whatever. They, they would reimburse or at least pay back a, a substantial part of the investment capital, keep some in a permanent fund that would perhaps allow the entity to strike at those most um, difficult objections for landowners and somehow perhaps find a way to mitigate some of those. What if a landowner said, well, jeepers, I, I, I really need a bunch of money in five years. I was planning to do a harvest here. Maybe you make them a loan and they pay it back in carbon. And, the, the, you know, at the end of that 25 years, um, you know, they could choose to harvest or they, you know, you've got, you've been made whole by the credits that they didn't get that covered that somehow. Um, or, I, you know, there are probably other ways to do this. I don't know what really would motivate landowners. To me, that's one of the big questions that we haven't answered, which is what are those objectives? How interested are Vermont landowners in this sort of thing? We can certainly imagine that there may be a lot of initial interest, and then you're going to narrow it down to four or five people. That may be the first group, right? And then as you, if there's enough feasibility there, as you develop a successful group of projects, more people are going to be interested. So it would be a semi-long-term commitment, and um, you know there could be a lot of objections from, from people, but um, it, it was just an idea. And you well, know, it seems like you're, you're pulling out stuff at the front end. I am. Um, of project development, and then there's the back end of marketing. So if they can get a higher price, then that makes it more feasible, makes it front pump. And it gives us control of the story to a certain and extent. So to, to complicate the matter is what if there were a trust fund <laughs> that local comp instead of buying the credit after everybody else has done all this work to develop it, what if they pay for it up front? Absolutely. And a trust fund that becomes a revolving loan fund that can help start these programs, give cover some of the upfront costs. I mean then you have the problem of them getting credit for a credit that hasn't been created for ten years. So and well, that's where you get into the idea of, well, could the state lands be <coughs> anchoring it somehow mm -hmm. or some other things? So, um, so I'm thinking... But doing it right is the big challenge. Yeah, <laughs> I'm thinking this, for our purposes in this report, that I'm thinking about trying to answer this ch charge. And um, there may be a lot of ideas that come from all of you to help flesh this out a little bit more. But I don't know that they need to be in this... I wasn't thinking that we would go into great detail here. I think we would say, this is what we've learned. This is what kind of makes sense to us. And there could be a lot of different directions it might go. And that'd be great if we had a summit of all interested parties to come together and brainstorm this, the organizational structure, the requirements for credit, the capital, you know, this, do we need an underwriter to help us understand which of these things are likely to go and which aren't? I'm not quite sure how that would all work. But I think those are details that if this idea flies, it's going to take buy-in from the partners, and if it doesn't have that, then it's not, then not a lot of sense to go any much further. But at least from our perspective as this study group, I think it's, to me, it made sense, and I'm happy to, again, I don't have any ownership on this, it just was a way to, um, to bring some of those pieces together that seemed obvious. I, I understand what you're saying, Robert. <coughs> and talking about this entity to coordinate, okay? Um, but I, I haven't seen in any of the information that's come in a state that's actually done that yet, correct? That's okay. true. So, so that to me is, is key if we put something forward like this to, to say that, that, you know, this, this is, because again, it, it goes back to my concern with all these bullet points. I mean, it's great to say these things. It's another thing to have some sort of an idea of how it's going to work. Right. And we don't have a blueprint out there as to how it's going to work. We don't. We'd, be, we'd definitely be entering new ground. But it might set us up for a conversation, you know, where, you know, our, what we're doing is giving this to you all in, the, in this building, and the next obvious step there would be for somebody to 
you know, charge a group with seeing if it's feasible, you know, working out those details. You, you wouldn't necessarily be going from this to implementation. It would be more like, you know, somebody at University of Vermont or something like, you know, that could dig into how you might make something going from the, ex the learning experience that we've had with Georgia and the other states, you know, like, is, is this a feasible, viable way forward? Uh, you know, I don't know. I'm, this is, I'm kind of processing this. And it's Other comments on Robert's proposal? Well, maybe I'll just point out that uh, I don't envision there being any need for legislative action to make this happen at this stage. It may make sense that there's a structure that it makes the most sense to have some state buy-in and, and that may require some legislative or administrative action mm -hmm. but but it, but this could all happen completely independent of this I don't think it could actually respectfully I, I don't see how we it's within as you've described it and frankly but for what it's worth you I think you've appropriately captured the, the a strength of FPR and a, an appropriate role information um, sharing and, and a clearinghouse kind of role yeah. uh, so that's good but for us to engage in this in some sort of a program to facilitate enrollment when we haven't really even gotten to there, uh, I think we would have to get there, decide that that's something, and then say something like this, where, as Jim said, you know, this sort of frame it up in general, that we would recommend, if you're going to do a program, maybe this would be the best kind of thing. But boy, a lot of work would be needed. And I don't see us making it happen. Um, it's within our enabling statutes. But not the capacity, certainly. No, no. And the directive would need, I think it would need, in order to link with those other entities, we would need statutory authority. Uh, that's oh, it. okay. That's my take. Yeah, I, I, I agree. Yeah. I, mm -hmm. I, I, I think you might be able to do it, but you wouldn't have the sort of... Uh, you wouldn't have the push. You wouldn't have the push, and you wouldn't have the, you know covering your ass yes. kind of thing, <laughs> you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that doesn't mean it's not, it's, it can't happen. I just was commenting on that sure. one remark that you made that I don't think we need legislation. I think probably would, and I'm trying to thread the needle here with I think Mark's points are well taken, and I think Jim gave a helpful response, frankly, which is that this wouldn't be go to implementation from here. It would be, okay, you guys, if you want a statewide program, and you've asked us about that, Here's the, what we think might work, and it needs a lot of work to stand it up. Uh, and that would, you know, maybe, I don't know, maybe another study committee would ensue. <laughs> uh, but uh, sure. But so, no, or you just sort so, of contract. You know, but we, we, we've been asked to evaluate how a statewide program could happen. And I'll, I agree, right from the start, I've been like choking on, like, well, it kind of assumes that there should be one. And I think part of our work is to is to evaluate whether they're if in part of I think we can interpret it to to review how to structure and regulate. We could conclude that it shouldn't be done, like like that we could, but I'd like to give it a shot and say, so this our report could say well we did re evaluate it and we could say we don't recommend it, or we could say if you know if we we do recommend that there's some merit in this a program to help facilitate enrollment and this. Um, collection of entities with these particular strengths could be joined and leveraged to create that statewide program. And an awful lot of things need to get worked out, uh, blah, blah, blah. That's about as far as I would go with it. And I think it would be responsive to the charge, which I th I'm sort of into. Senator. Yeah, I think, uh, you can, uh, Mr. Steve? Webster. Oh, Webster. I'm sorry. Did you want to say something, Steve? Well, I his hand. I just want to draw a contrast between UVA, which is enacted, I think, around 1980, yeah. and my family's response to that. And my personal response now, because not all the family's still alive, uh, and I may not be alive a lot longer, because I'm pushing up there. But we, we embraced UVA enthusiastically first year we could get into it. Right. And we were patient, patiently and waiting for it to be enacted. Here, um, the sentence I underlined here is, um, it seems prudent to anticipate only a small number of landowners would actually sign up. And I wouldn't be one that would sign up for a long time, because I just don't need this complication in my life. We're having enough trouble just managing the land, finding loggers that are still in business, uh, finding mills that accept product, um, and this isn't the answer for us. 
to, to you know, the economic right, problems. So they just throw that out. Senator? Yeah, so I mean, when I was envisioning what I thought maybe our recommendations might be after all these meetings and uh, trying to edit this document, I I thought that the three things that I wanted to see would be to charge the department with providing more information about this as, as uh, a thing. You know, we at one point talked about having you develop a website that had a lot of information about this and who you could go to for if you're interested in signing up for this and with inform and maybe it's just you know taking this report and making it more of a website. Um, uh, so, and that sort of plays into what Robert was saying as your department has a lot of information and provide and, and does a lot of outreach in the through County Forest totally and all that stuff. Yeah. So that's what that's I was thinking is like you do, you just sort of beef up your information on this as a possibility for landowners. Right. And you also maybe refer people who are interested to PNC and VLT or whatever, potentially. Mm -hmm. Then the second thing is I am really interested in seeing if we can put state land in one of these markets. Because I'm, I'm interested, frankly, in both the the, the, the way it sort of models it, saying like, look, we think this is a good idea, and we think it's a good idea, so we're going to actually put a parcel of state land into it. And I know that there are complications with that, but I, I think it might be worth those complications. And it could also, it, it's sort of role modeling that we believe in maintaining forests, and that we believe in carbon sequestration, and that's an important thing to battle climate change. And frankly, we could get revenue, and then we could potentially support your department better with. Right. For what it's worth, the that's the piece that's different for, and new. That everything else you said is already happening through our traditional approaches to stewardship, technical assistance, and management to, for for keeping forest forest right, and, right. and climate resilience. It would be the new revenue source to private landowners that we would be modeling, for, and maybe to the state. Right, and I, that, I, that doesn't exist, and that interests me too. Right, so I think the revenue piece, but I also think like this sort of entrepreneurialship of this and that kind of a new forest product. Somebody in in their language said that these carbon offsets are a forest product in the same way that you know timber is a forest and clean product water. And, and clean, clean water. Air. So you know, I think role modeling the ability to cash in on new forest yes. products is a good thing. So so, the, so those two things, the information piece, the putting forest state land in it, and maybe that state land is an anchor for a larger project too, and I think that there's a lot of you know, possibilities being the mentor, being the role model, and saying, hey, join with us in this project. Yep. And then the third thing that we, we talked about at one point was the potential for municipal forests and um, and maybe having your department um, work with municipal forests to see if it's possible to enter them collectively as and <coughs> with maybe um, the Nature Conservancy to see if, if that as an aggregation project. Because I also think that, you know, at Robert and I had this conversation, you know, oh, you get you go to town meeting and you see that line on your on your town meeting budget and that it's, you know, revenue from carbon offsets for the town forest and everybody you know, thinks about that as there's there's actually like financial value to it in a way that it hadn't been before. So those are the three things that I thought would be good. And then the fourth one sort of leading into what Robert's saying is if we were to create a statewide program, this is what we recommend as the next step. But not necessarily recommending it, if you know what I mean, just saying that if we were to, because I'm concerned about setting up an entire state bureaucracy for a very few number of landowners participating. And I, I think Steve's point of, you know, he wouldn't do this, but he did UVA, um, and Mark's point of, you know, the trust funds that have been set up in other states haven't worked. And I'm concerned about going down this path, investing state money in it, investing state time in it, investing everybody's a lot of things in it, and then not having it work but but i think talking about if we were to go here this is what we would have to do and then you guys you experts can then decide if you want to take that ball and roll run with it or not 
that's sort of where I was thinking. Yeah, but. and, and uh, I'd add another comment similar to the first one I said is on your point about municipal forests, which I, I heard from, I think we heard from Cecilia, had real promise for, and maybe better, <coughs> sir, better positioned as the model, the demonstration and model mm -hmm. than state lands. But I just say, there again, we, um, we, since 1915, we've been following a statute that directs us to give services to municipal forests. Um, it's over 100 years. Yeah. Uh, and we do that mm -hmm. and do it really well. And this, So the only thing new would be to advise municipalities <coughs> on carbon offsets in their town forests. Well, and I think so what I'm saying is we're already, thing we're already positioned to play that role with towns, and this right. would be an additional thing. Right. It's not like creating everything, a whole new relationship with towns. Right. Yes. Yeah, so the infrastructure already exists. Yes. You already are doing this. You already know. I mean, you literally know who to call yep. and, and who, what the, who the players are. Right. So it's not like creating an whole entire new program. Much of this statutory uh, authority, probably almost all of it, already exists. It does. It would just be giving you an added bump, an added, yes. you know, saying, hey, hey, we want you to actually do this, and we expect the results, you know, that kind of thing, so that then it's not you going off and cowboying it in this new weird thing that you think is fun, or whatever. <coughs> it's that you've been told you should do it, yeah. if that makes any sense. Yes. Um, I'm being... Uh, right, you, right. Yeah. Uh, Thank you, Steve. Yeah, Burlington City Council has actually voted to do this. Oh. Are you aware of that? No. To do what? What does it say? Well, so, somebody will <coughs> read that. Oh, oh. project me a read. It's in the city of Burlington. Yeah, yeah, do you want to read it? We're going to finish the document. Let's read it. Okay. Burlington to sell carbon credits for trees on city parks. Uh, Burlington City Council decided on Monday night, this is August 14th, 2019, uh, to sell carbon credits for the trees in its city parks. Pat Bradley of the New York Public Radio Station, WMC reports, working through a carbon offset company, not named, uh, credits would be purchased by the state and other entities looking to meet carbon goals. Well, if someone is buying, and it says, a resolution put before the council on Monday authorizes the city to contract with urban offsets. Ward 6 Kent, uh, Democrat Karen Paul explained that if the company can sell the offsets over the next two years, the city would generate $135,000, which would be placed in a dedicated fund to support more tree plantings. Thank you, Steve. Keith? I just need to acknowledge, given the capacity of the county foresters, we are actually being forced to pull back on our support of municipalities. We barely have enough capacity to administer UDA effectively, let alone provide the important services to county forests and community forests. So uh, doing that work is among the, the favorite work of any county forester, incredibly valuable in demonstrating uh, management, but it's um, difficult to prioritize, so if there is such a recommendation that comes from the group recognizing that it is, it's not within the current capacity of the county foresters to uh, do additional work, let alone the current work that's expected. Of Thanks, Keith. It's good that the group gets to hear that in a different voice. Now. <laughs> <laughs> so what would, may I ask, so, sorry, yeah, go ahead. I, so what would be the, to, increase the capacity sufficiently to be able to do this kind of thing, what would it mean more positions, more less of something would, else? Yeah, what, what, it's what? complicated, and, and in essence, yes. I mean, that's the short version, but I mean, I think Keith's point is, is a good one. I say, well, since 1915, we've been doing this, but, and I used to do a lot of it as a county forester, mm -hmm. and as Keith says, it's the best stuff, because you really get, a, there's a lot of bang for your buck. You get community engagement, and people learn, and it's infective, infectious, uh, and, uh, <coughs> but we've had to, because of other statutory obligations, particularly with the current use program, we've had to tell folks, you got you got to drop some of that. We just can't prioritize, as Keith says, that work, given this responsibility and this very important other program. So we've had to kind of pull away, and now private consultants are doing more of that work mm -hmm. with communities. So it's just making the larger point that if we were to gear up with a municipal forest effort, or any of these efforts, frankly, even on state lands, we don't have anybody. We have expertise but we do not have bodies. A dedicated staff member. Who yes, did. and and it, it's a big state. There's a hundred and, how many town forests? Uh, I don't know exactly, 165 or something. something. So we'd love to do it, but we can't do that 
under present capacity. That's really it. And it's, right. it's and just that. And I think that. that we would have to state that. We, we would. You know, yeah. uh, and then everyone But it doesn't mean the idea isn't not. sound or right. isn't worth pursuing. It's just a f practical reality that we need to be careful with and make sure everybody knows. And we wouldn't want to throw that in at the last minute like cold water on this. Right. So I think it's important to put it in the upfront in the report. And so that people know that if they want yeah. to support this, then they would have to put a capacity. Compa have money where their mouth is, kind yeah. of thing, and that's typical. That's like yeah, what, exactly it's just a practical reality. And once people see that, maybe they'll say, "Oh, I'd rather do this other thing that might have a bigger bang for the buck." Right. I don't know. And then that would be me in the chair saying, "Thank you for your interest in this. We share it. And if we're going to have any added capacity, it would be to deal with the things we're already behind on right now." current use and public recreation on, on state lands, which we are, you know, falling way behind. So I, I would say this would be at least third or fourth in our tier of priorities for new capacity, given what we keep being asked to do. And I think that's fair for you to testify yes. to that point. That's what but I meant by sitting in the chair. putting it yep. in here and yep. saying this is what we would recommend. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, I, yes, I just want to bring up that becoming expert in helping somebody develop a project is huge. Yeah. And that's why everybody hires project developers exactly. to do that. And um, so you. thinking that every county forester will become a project developer is certainly unrealistic. Um, so I'm, I'm, and I'm looking up this urban offsets people and trying to figure out who they actually, they have all different registries and all different, it's very interesting. Anyway. Um, <laughs> So, uh, but Jim, I was wondering for TNC, so they're doing this working lands offset program or whatever, they're trying working to, woodlands. working woodlands, they're trying to get, they're trying to do what I think Robert was describing, or, or are they doing something different? Why, do, what would be the role of the state in that? So, the, the way working woodlands works now mm -hmm. is, individuals with primarily really large ownerships will mm -hmm. come to TNC or TNC will go to them and as part of a larger conservation project, protection project, will put a working forest easement on the property and at the same time develop a carbon project. So with somebody else? Who's it depends. So it's, a, it's been evolving. In the early years of working woodlands, it was we would go to a blue source and just you know, do the turnkey operation and they developed a bunch of projects for us. As capacity has <coughs> grown within the Nature Conservancy, where there's expertise now on staff of people that have done enough programs working with Blue Source and everything, we now will either do that in-house or do uh, contracts for services. So we might go to a, a SIG or, or somebody to just do the actual modeling or, or whatever. And then more and more as TNC is generated credits, we just we go straight to market with, we market those as TNC working with those credits because we built relationships with corporations and others to sell them. So we, can, we feel we can get a premium for those. Um, so, so you're taking both ends and all the way up to the middle. Yes, <clears throat> um, and it's kind it's, of, you know, I would say the m more robust in the uh, central Appalachians because that's kind of where the program started and it's continuing to sort of grow out. So, so I really wanted to call Greg Mead and ask him, <coughs> you know, Greg Mead is the director of this program in the central Appalachians ah, for TNC, and ask him, how would you do it, you know, if you were a state and you were trying to support this idea? And so I, I didn't do that, but I, um, but I think what Jim's describing is a model that we're seeing more and more of, that the, there's a bigger group of people who are willing to do the technical services piece, respecting the fact that there are others that do some of those other pieces better right. or more effectively given their particular thrust than a, a standard developer might. I mean, so it's a, a developer <laughs> business, whereas these guys have bigger goals. So the and question is, should we try to replicate that here or not? Because it's all you guys have already developed that capacity. We could just say... Talk the capacity to. is limited in here, in, in his case, too. You see, we have the opportunity to build local capacity to right. do some of those things and use their skills where they come. But, but then the other difference is the size of the parcels and 
you know, this, the model work in central Appalachia because the trees grow faster and, and they have larger parcels. No, the model the works in the central apps primarily because we have larger pro and both, right? Trees are growing big down there and we have larger properties to work with, which is why the Nature Conservancy is partnered with the Vermont Land Trust to look at cracking this <coughs> aggregation effort because, mm. you know, everywhere else we have small parcels and well-stocked trees, so how do we get them to market? So we're trying to figure that out, and, and that's, I think, we're that, you know, it's that larger aggregation, like how do we then scale that up? You know, Cold Hollow was, you know, a handful of properties. And, and that was challenging, it's not about Well, it's challenging right? because nobody's done it yet, right. and so we're, we're hoping by, you know, what we're learning there is that it, it can be replicated, and we're trying to seek some additional funding to figure out how we do that. So what would the state, what role would the state be? How would their involvement make a difference in that? Because kind of, um, you're already looking at it here. I've, I've scratched my head around that a little bit. Part of that is making sure that, um, and I think we speak to this in the report, is that our use value appraisal program, UVA, <coughs> current use, doesn't um, inhibit people from being able to to join aggregation efforts. Mm -hmm. So we want to make sure that there's a pathway forward there because we know, you know, most of the properties that will be interested in enrolling in this program are probably already in current use. Right. So we want to make sure that that's compatible with that. You made that point, I think, in a few places in the report. Yes. There's a lot of compatibility. <laughs> there is a lot. And so I think we're covering Finding that. So, so it's that, but for me, that we just need to be very clear. We want to make sure that we're not creating barriers for landowners to explore this. <laughs> but you're not seeing some clear gap that, geez, if the state just had the resources, the initiative, the, the training, the mandate, whatever. I think, and then there's a, just, you know, making sure that our county foresters and anybody that's interacting with landowners understands these markets enough to say, yeah, there's something there, go talk to these guys if you really want to dig in. So there's a little bit of that. But, you know, I'm, you know, other than, you know, I think that I have to, having just seen this from Robert, you know, I, I need to kind of digest it a can little I, bit. Can I answer this? Yeah, go. Cool. Yeah. So uh, I think one role that the state could play would be in the feasibility analysis, like Jack suggested, which is um, right now in the hands of developers. So there's, there's, there's an aspect of that that's really important in my mind for someone with real transparency to control. So. We're not doing this because we think we can make money. <laughs> you know, we're, we're not right. looking at this project because we're, we're, its success for us is based on its success for you. We're saying um, we can evaluate the feasibility on its merits for, yes, there's a cost structure that we might have to meet in order to provide a certain set of services, but we're not taking a 20% or a 30% or a 40% cut on, on the carbon here. We're, we're going to be able to do this on a fee-for-services basis. So. I think that the expertise required for that pre-project feasibility analysis could very easily fall into the uh, the um, the person that might uh, be an analyst in the department. Yeah, I was wondering. Hey, if uh, can I ask a question? Please, um, Jack, go ahead. I was uh, just thinking back to uh, Steve Webster's comment that um, you wouldn't be interested in in this. Is is that? Uh, because you now understand it um, as a result, uh, much better as a result of uh, the, the study group, um, or it, it just on the face of it, you know, the carbon credits for forest lands just is of no interest to you. And I, I ask that just because I, I know we don't know what all the forest landowners think about this or what they know about it, but I'm just trying to get a sense of. It would even getting to the point of not knowing much about this, understanding it well enough that you could decide to proceed or not would be useful. Well, I, I know now maybe more clearly than I did before how expensive it is to get into the program, um, but maybe I'm laboring under um, my current circumstances, which is that my life is so wrapped up with other projects, litigation, uh, volunteer work for a nonprofit, things like that, none of which is uh, compensatory. 
Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, I, I just don't have the mental energy to tackle something like this. But even so, I mean, I've known about um, uh, easements for a long time, uh, donated easements or purchased easements that um, alter forever um, the relationship to your land and to other people, and that's never been appealing to me. And this is mm -hmm. similar to that, Jack. Yeah, thanks. I know we don't have more time to study. It, it seems like it would be helpful to get a better sense of what forest land owners do know about this and what their attitudes are, and that, that might be some work that could be done, too, to get a better sense of where the state's landowners are. Has there been a Thanks. survey? Thanks. Keith, do you know if the, the National Woodland Owners Survey now asks about carbon offset projects? Because that, that's, a, that's a, a thing that is done repeatedly by the Fed. Yesterday, I got the 2018 version of that. I can answer that in two minutes. <laughs> Way to go, Keith. Well, I think that, um, I think we, before any um, service group, if you want to call it that, were to be created, we'd have to do that kind of uh, marketing, uh, market research to right. figure That's out whether there was, yeah. there was enough of a demand for that. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, all I know is anecdotally that, you know, Forest Carbon Works has a dozen or half a dozen to a dozen people who have contacted them and said, we're interested in doing something. Mm -hmm. Steve? Uh, I do remember recently, maybe a month or two ago, seeing um, a reference in an American Forest magazine, um, a reference to some resource they had in-house to educate people on this topic. I don't, I didn't follow through because I ran out of time, as this usually happens. I, I have a question for Jim or Jack, um, and maybe this isn't something that you've broken out or whatever, but even in, let's say, the Bird Mountain Project alone, and you haven't even gotten to, you know, a, a completion as to what it's actually going to be yet, what, what are your estimated costs or hours involved um, is, is there any is there any way to quantify that yes I don't have an answer for you I mean I, I'm, I could give you a wag that I'm reluctant to do that you know that, that makes so much it's so what's hard to, is because we went through blue force who's doing full project development in exchange for credits on the back end. It's hard for us to know exactly how much time they're pouring in, into that. Mm -hmm. You know, I you know, have an estimate on how much our time is, and it, which quite honestly has not been that burdensome. You know, that's the beauty of going to a blue source is they're, they're handling and then, you know, I get a call every month maybe at the most that they need some information, you know, and you know, my most recent experience has been, you know, I had about a two week period where all I was doing was Burnt Mountain because we were shifting from one to the other. And the, but honestly, most of that work was because I had to get others within TNC to approve what I had already approved. Um, but again, in the end, that, that blue source, the company that you're working with, they're going to they're going to yield a, a quite a substantial amount of money through these credits, correct? They will yield some income out of it, yep. yeah. Whether so they I, consider it substantial or not, is that, that's up for them. <laughs> I think that goes to what Steve's talking about a lot as far as is this viable for me as a forest landowner to go through all this, which you're not even going through a big chunk of it because it's being sourced out. But anyway, I just yeah. I think that's part of it. Yeah. But, all right, I think Keith might have a... Yeah, I, uh, go, I, ahead, I'd say, go ahead, Jack. I'd say, too, in... Um, the, the one thing that maybe might shed some light on that is the uh, Robert, you had that um, model that uh, the yeah. what SIG people did. Was it SIG? <laughs> she started with three and made it four. Uh, yeah, that's it's true. The, the, the website information, the, the, the putting the state land in the municipal forests and then recommending that if we were to do a statewide program, this is what we Next step. That, okay. This is the next step. Okay. Well, I was thinking then somewhere between number four and five, um, okay. which, which is somewhere in between number five and what you were saying. Um, what I was wondering is, is it possible and would it be helpful to have an online tool where they can just plug in a few parameters about their site? It wouldn't be as complicated as the Madamet one, but would take that step of pre-qualifying them. It's sort of whatever Blue Sauce does up front. And would that even be helpful? Because now you're saying your pre-qualification 
whatever, their first assessment said, oh, you could do the compliance market, and then when they actually measured the trees, it's like, no, you have to do this other thing. But would it be helpful, and is it possible to have an easy thing where you just plug in five to ten parameters and determine whether or not you should keep looking further into it? It's kind of like what DCS is Would that be useful? Yeah, I think there are places that you could do that. Right. That, I assume they're already there, yeah, you know? I mean, but the question is, are they useful? Be. I don't know. I mean, I, I've had conversations with landowners who have called me f saying, "When? how can I do this? What can I do to get my lands enrolled? And, and, and frequently what I hear is, you know, that, that they think it's the right thing to do. Yeah. That they feel like this is something they want to commit to. Um, it's hard to say we're not there yet, but that's basically my response to them. Is we can't. We don't have an arrangement that allows you to do it on a 75-acre or 100-acre scale. We just mm -hmm. don't. And don't give up, but check in in a year or two or five years, and maybe things will change. This, you know, I start this whole section by saying what we <coughs> learned from this exercise is that it's complicated and it's dynamic. And so it, it's going to fall to somebody to keep a pulse on this thing for a while. And I don't know who that's going to be once this group dies and I retire because <laughs> there's not a lot you know there's there's got to be some momentum here and you know I looked at the nature serving land trust as having taken a step towards a commitment there and you know how do we bring and, and the fact that you guys are such willing partners it just seems like there's got to be some way to bundle this expertise into it, you know, something that could happen but that's that's it it's just a dream okay so we are 55 minutes away from the journal, and we are nearing the end of the original walkthrough guided by our lead editor. You want to jump back in, and I mean, where, maybe we should just where? How should we leave this proposed charge six? Uh, <coughs> shall we agree to kind of enter it in to this version of the draft with the discussion we had about it, which is that we're not necessarily saying this should happen, but that for now it's the best we got for a statewide program concept that would be flagged as needing lots of work and enumerate the kinds of things that are needed. Is it everyone willing to leave it in or put it in at this point in that, in that way, if, I, if I'm reflecting the conversation appropriately? Everybody good? I think if we just put the caveat at the front that, that this isn't necessarily what we're recommending, right. but that this isn't, caveats this is one all way over. to do it. Yeah, yes. lots of caveats then. Then I think we could plot it. I would probably edit it to make it shorter, Robert. Do your thing. <laughs> this, was, this was just throwing what I could right. down. Yeah, I and we appreciate it. Uh, um, comments quick. Others? <coughs> well, just, you know, in looking at it again, I mean, there's more questions here than there are answers. So I just. Which is that I'd be more comfortable for? with than, than statements and recommendations that should be questions that aren't. You know, I, I think the questions are kind of helpful, actually. Okay. But, you know, opinions can vary. Others, for now? So are we going to have a recommendation section? Because I was kind of thinking term. six was, we have would to be that. If this is it, then, then we're missing other, other potential ideas. Yes, and there's charge seven and eight to get to. And eight is okay. whatever else we, it is kind of an open-ended, whatever else we want to recommend. So I think we're, we have the opportunity to provide recommendations, and we're, we as a group haven't gotten to those yet, other than okay. what have been kind of uh, obtusely offered in draft, in various people's drafts so far, right? But I think we need, that's part of where we're trying to get to, Cecilia. Okay. So I was assigned charge seven, and I felt completely incapable of writing anything for charge seven because it was, uh, because six was blank. And mm -hmm. And so part of my motivation was self-serving. If, <laughs> if I have a straw dog in charge six, then at least I could do something in charge seven. Keep rolling, Robert. Mm -hmm. Can That's I all. suggest a thing for charge seven? Yeah. So there are so many things of the, the possibilities of if, if it's compliance market versus voluntary market, if it's this kind of land versus this kind of land. Right. There are so many things that we could just do. This is an example of this kind of parcel in this market with this price. And I like just, it. Just do, uh, and it, so it doesn't even show like but it's, we're expecting to get you know five hundred thousand dollars out right. of this, but it would, we would be right. We would list if I'm understanding you. We might describe that it depends, given that it depends on so many things. Yeah. We can't actually evaluate yeah, this. Yeah. We can't but answer. We're gonna, we're trying hard. So here's what we got: is this one snapshot of a potential sort of 
um, what a, uh, a typical kind of private woodlot kind of scenario? Is that what you're suggesting? Yeah, I would say do two of them though. So two to examples. Stand, so yeah, Just to range. say, here's one example. If you got into the compliance market, you could get this. If you got in voluntary market, you could get this. Okay, that's and an offering that's been put forward. Any, any reaction to it? Mine is I kind of like the idea for a way to deal with charge seven. Mine is that that's not what charge seven is looking for. <laughs> Tell us a little. I mean, the way I read charge seven is it says, following right after charge six if you're going to do a program what are the revenues from that program and how should that revenue be allocated within the context of the program that you've disguised and, and we discussed in that actually in previous meetings salaries. and we yeah. said well what we said was well any rep this is kind of a strange question because yeah. the revenues accrued to the landowner well, but I think that the, the, the well, not if it's state land. If, if, no, but I think well, that this envisions a state program. Yeah. I might be interpreting it wrong, yeah. but I think yeah. six envisions a state program, and seven it follows does. as the as the consequences of having that program. Where would that? Where would the money from that program? Why would it not go to the landowner? What am I missing? Because the program is to cover its costs and that there would be some expectation that the state would benefit from this. So you're saying, like a measure. developer, what would what would our cut be? Exactly. Because you have to, if they're not talking about allocating funds from the legislature. Fair enough. Here. Doesn't it still kind of depend, as Senator Hardy says, on so many things? Maybe, but what I'm hearing you guys talk about is that this is a case study of a typical parcel, and I don't no, know. No, we're just trying does. to frame up what I thought I heard was kind of a, a way to credibly respond to this difficult question by giving some helpful perspective on the range of possibilities depending on where you land in this universe. Yeah, I think when, when people have asked me, including... Or we could just have Mark do this section. Yeah, I mean, I do have in there, or JF Mark could have done this. Um, uh, Good timing, Mark. <laughs> um, is, you know, people ask this question, how much, how much money could we get? You're right. on the study committee, what have you learned? Right. And my answer is always, it depends. You know, it depends on <laughs> the, yes. you know, so I think we can put in, I mean, we can even put three different scenarios, just saying if we put in, you know, 25,000 acres of super tall trees that were, you know, you know, whatever. <laughs> best case, worst case, best, mid case, best yeah, case. Yeah, and then the sort of obvious, you know, then, and then the, I think the obvious answer to how the, al the revenue should be allocated is that it would have to first cover the cost of the, of the program. Um, and if it's a state program, it would have to cover the cost of state employees and yeah. administration and all that. If it's a private, that you know, the, they would have to cover their cost of getting into the program, and then they, they would get the, the benefit of it. Yeah. But ultimately, how revenue is allocated is our job. Like, the, the legislature is the one that decides how to yes. appropriate state revenue. So, you know, I, I don't, I'm, I'm not sure exactly why it would have to set stated like that. Cecilia. So um, one of the documents I referenced up front um, was something by Manmet that came out recently that um, that gave their red, yellow, green that we decided was simplistic, but they gave specific cases. So it's that full thing, real yeah. parcels with real acreage, and why this one was viable, why this one was questionable, right. why this one was yeah. unviable. So I don't know if we need to repeat it or just include their things, but there is some guidance out there. We could also link to that. Do the hot link to that in this section. We could yeah, sure. do a couple examples link to the hot link for so like Howland Forest. They do a couple. I, I see, seems to make a lot of sense to, to me. I, I think we have no idea how much revenue we get, so we could just yeah, set up but examples. I don't think we're really looking at this as a way to really earn money for the state. So maybe the state lands would. Yes. But the way I, you're I say that we would want to see revenue. State, we have to allocate <laughs> money to make to provide those resources from the state to partner. It takes it takes. Well, I would hope that. Well, one of the examples could be a state parcel that we, you yes. know, we could ask. You, yes. you could put in an example if we put this twenty-five thousand acre. Yep. state parcel and we could get this much revenue. I think that that's a good call. We should make that if we're going this direction, we should make that one of the at least one of the of the yeah. scenarios. Wow. Do we do we have enough information to even do that though? I, I mean I, I don't think so. 
Well, we have. A, I think we have enough information to estimate. Yeah. Uh, with a bunch of provisos, caveats, etc. I, I do. I mean, that's what. Didn't, didn't, by the way, didn't, <coughs> Mr. Did you walk us through a little spreadsheet? If you have this yeah. acres and this thing, then this. Yeah. Make but a I made all of those assumptions. <laughs> right. That's, right. We're just clear about our assumptions, and exactly. we because we don't have anything else. I, I think it's it's yeah. fair to say we don't know, but right. here are some here are some examples of what maybe rough, maybe rough estimates that span it in a bunch of different be. categories. We've got estimates from a number of different sources. I have a table that I could plug in here that shows different parts of the country and the estimated revenues. I mean, that's... Well, we could link to that, too, or put that in as another example. And Jack has some actual data from a real project that we could also cite. You know, if you're... The, for the Middlebury College thing, you actually have the estimates of what your offsets are. Yeah, yeah, I put that table in... Um, a little case, case study. study. Okay, so I haven't put the case study in yet, Jack. But um, I'll, I'm going to put it in a in a an appendix. But yes, we can do okay. that as an example. Yeah, and it, let, let me go back over that. Just having had this conversation, to see if there's any more relevant information we could include in there. Okay. Send me an updated and, and version. I, I do agree too. I thought the Manomat piece um, uh, publication was really helpful. Um, if you were coming at this from a, you know, what, what, what's this potentially, um, how does this work from a financial perspective? I thought they, they did a pretty good job of, of laying it out. So I think it's good to link to that. We've been talking a lot about developing a project that's viable. And it, one of the things that Robert showed was the price sensitivity, that that's really important. What we haven't talked about is can the state do anything to change the price? Um, that they would get. And I think the idea came up, you know, what if Act 250 requires people to offset their carbon um, for a new development? And what if we do something like California and say a certain percentage of it has to be Vermont-based off offsets or something like that? Mm -hmm. That would create demand, which theoretically would increase price. I don't know that we could meet demand, but we haven't really talked about that angle at all. I, th I think I agree, but I'm not sure that's this charge. I, I, I'm with, I just find it really hard for us to say what that is because it's unclear to me what the um, like what the parameters are for the revenue, right. where the project's coming from, who's doing the you know it's just like there's so much there that I think the best we can do is probably you know your table or you know and having you know Jacks and his you know the Middlebury as as the one example of a project that has been done here in Vermont. I mean that's the best we can yeah, do right now. The data point of one. Well, that's all we've got, right, Jack? Yeah, yeah. So if I if I could, Cecilia, do yeah, you And again, I'm coming from a legislative point of view. Okay, mm -hmm. I understand what you're saying, but you're talking about state mandates that would increase the amount of money people would get for these credits. Okay. Mm -hmm. Those, the, those state mandates, whether it's to a car dealership, whether it's to a business to Act 250, they're going to put that cost up in their product. You're going to pay for it as a general public. It's not something that's magically out there. Oh, I agree. It's, okay. I it's understand. Or they're going out of business. Yeah. No, I'm not trying to make more cost for other people, but it's just if there's going to be a climate component to anything that goes forward like that, then there are ways to to favor Vermont. And so uh, you had said the compliance market was going down. Demand for compliance offsets may be on the decline. And I wasn't sure about that because California is actually increasing the number of sectors. That's why they're reducing how much that you can that you can use. But they're then increasing the number in a few years out. So they're expecting the offsets to go up. And then New York State now has a new climate bill that's supposed to include forest offsets. And we would actually be, we're border with them. So we're, if they do the same thing as California, which requires that you have a direct benefit to California, and they think of direct benefit as well, water flows from <laughs> Nevada to California, we're right next to New York. We could be a prime candidate for the New York compliance market. Mm -hmm. And that's way out there. Um, nobody even knows what that's going to look like yet. But I, don't, I didn't know if that was a fair statement that compliance well, I, I, I do down. think that I think it is I, I, worth mentioning whether or not we do it, but worth mentioning that there are ways the state could um, help uh, 
favor Vermont based credits or however you want to phrase it you phrased it better than that but um, that there are policy decisions that could be made mm -hmm. and put an example about that because I think that 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 does link it to other work that legislatures doing in other areas that are not that are outside of this study committee mm -hmm. um, and and I think that that is helpful and again it's a policy decision I don't know if we would end up doing it but I think it's something that hadn't I hadn't thought of until right. I just said it and Reggie is your other opportunity right, right. And so the other thing is I don't think we're doing that but at least two other states are using their reg Reggie money towards forest carbon offsets on a very yeah. minute well but there's also getting reforming Reggie right. to allow for right. more forest offsets to be used right. within that right. cap and trade structure <coughs> can I say so back to this what this section seven we would do the examples thing caveated caveated examples uh, the Middlebury College actual example yes Roberts table and link to the is it the man in that what, what, what's yeah that? I yeah. can send you a couple okay minutes. okay yes that's um, how I understand where we're what we're sort of proposing right now for seven okay is that um I, I'm, I'm looking at the time and knowing that I don't want to drive home in the deep dark. Right, we're going to finish okay. at four by hook or by crook, and the things we need to finish would be seven and eight, and then I think a discussion of how to get to the next level, which is going to be a separate meeting, um, one way or another, and public comment. That's what we need to allow for in the next 40 minutes. Who's going to do these potential examples? Is JFO going to do it, or is Robert going to do it, or am I going to do it, or are you going to do it? The potential examples were Robert said he had a table he could provide, right? A table, I could, um, I could think about the examples and okay. put something together. With yes, lots of caveats to say that this is not. Based well, either on they're caveats, or I could use this as an opportunity to say there's this project, and there's this project, and there's this project, and here's what yields have actually been from these okay. projects. Right. What I'm thinking when I when I'm visualizing it, it's it's literally like the math done out for people. Like when you're in you know trigonometry, and the the teacher writes it up <coughs> on the board, and so you understand it. Yes. You're showing we're showing our work there to get to the you know one hundred twenty five thousand dollars or whatever. I'm really hesitant to put specific numbers for specific acres in a highly variable and hypothetical situation. I that's my that's my that's the cav that's where the caveats. These are all yeah, fake but examples. If it's, but if so, what would be the alternative? Well, what would you just take use away a like I'd so like, to like go an A for you know Y is equal to M X plus B. If you don't know the number of the slope, but you can use is a that formula. Helpful? I think it is because I think you're seeing the math. I, most people do not know what the math is on this. You do, Robert. But what matters but is I didn't tell you how many credits are available, what's the cost of development, and what can you sell them for. Right. So if those three pieces are all you're looking for, we could probably put something together there. But but to me, it doesn't add a whole lot to the discussion in a way that's meaningful. Again, that's uh, being in fairness because you know so much. I know, yeah, I know. Yeah. Um, that's, I, that's I really do. I'm trying to get at people who know nothing who, who might yeah. have an interest. And yeah. I think that's okay. Recording? I'll try to keep yeah. it. Just show them that. Do a worst keep case scenario simple, best case scenario. Yeah. I'll I know try. that's yeah. hard. <laughs> it's hard for me. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I've read your work. That's <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> but thank you, Robert. That, that, I think, thank you. That's a huge contribution. Okay. Do you have so any senator for that? For that section, yeah. So then okay. section eight, other issue, the working. To me, this is just what do we want to recommend? And I mean, it seems like we've complicated this so much. I don't know that we want to add more things, except for maybe this is where we plop in what Cecilia was just saying about the other state policy, <coughs> what you were just saying. That's already in there up front. Right. That I would yeah. suggest, like, given the, the other, amount, what are other sorry. states doing? Jack, did you want to say something too? Uh, no, that's okay. I'll, okay. I'll just, uh, I'm fine. Thank you. <laughs> I, I'm going to go at, out on a limb here and make a suggestion that we just decline to address eight. We've got a heck of a report going on here, and we got our hands full with it. And I think we'll cover everything. We're covering everything we we can. Yeah. And respectfully, we we'll just say thanks. But we have nothing further to add. I can just not even include it. Exactly. Or, or if when she's editing, something doesn't seem to exactly. fit here, but we you have think it as it's a place important, to, you can sit them down and say additional things, or it can be an appendix, or. I'm proposing that comments, Jim. 
it just it seems to me that the earlier conversation about double counting fits right in here. Okay, we covered it. We, we said we I have just, to do it. I know, but I'm just wondering if that is this a place to move it out of that place and put it in. Did here. we cover it? Well, we discussed it. We discussed, we discussed it. it. We discussed it, and I assigned myself to writing something about okay. it. So, so Jim keep suggested. Keep it simple and put it in here. <laughs> yeah, everybody agree Could you remind me how simple I should I, keep it? Thank okay, you. So simple, eight, right? eight will be the Robert's kept simple version uh, uh, of double counting. Of double counting, and then otherwise it'll be a place for whatever we might emerge, as Cecilia says, as we head down the finish line here. Okay. Great. So we've made it through. The document so far. Thank you, Senator Robert. Go ahead. Um, so I'm reading the the legislation. This report shall include specific and detailed findings and proposals concerning the issues set forth in subsection C, which is the eight charges. Yeah. Two, a proposal for a pilot project to enroll state forest land in a carbon sequestration market. Yep. Three, any recommendations for legislative or regulatory action. So those should go, I would suggest, into the end of the report just as written there and say uh, so so remind me so I, uh, you know I'll just take this one on the state lands piece of pilot I mean I think we can respond and say we've looked at this these are the things that would have to happen and we're, we're not making our specific proposal is to not make a specific proposal uh, until these things have been met these you know that kind of an approach that we deal with it as best we can in other words and if we can propose legislation, we would. But uh, you know, if we can propose a pilot, we should. But I'm not sure uh, we're going to be able to. And I think it's okay to say that in being responsive to the charge. This is specific to the state lands issue. No, there's three of them, right? These are the three. They're the last part of the law of the right. legislation. It says the report shall include. It's after all <coughs> charges. Okay. I really wanted to reinforce that um, the section that we drafted on state forest land said specifically, here are a number of things that we would need to better right. understand. And if those were followed, we would be willing to contemplate putting together a pilot. So right. the recommendation of how to address that part of the legislation could be taken from our, thank you. From our yes, section. Thank you. So that's the way I read when you the stuff you drafted, I was like, oh, that's answering yeah. that charge. Right. That one of the the three at the end that says you're gonna do these three things, one of them is a pilot. And I'd say that's how we would propose to handle that piece. Yeah. What are the, remind us the first one, Robert? Specific and detailed findings and proposals concerning the issues set for us. Well, but that we've that's, done, the that's, entire report. that's the entire that's, report. Right. And Pilot three is any recommendations. The and then we could summarize our recommendations writ large here in this place at the end. Yes. So I think we're covered. I think we can be. I just well, wanted to make sure that those were. No, thank you for that. That's very helpful. I think that that we put up front. That's, remember, I in the, the In the executive summary. So if you go... Well, oh, I see, right. You yeah, want to start... Yeah, I, I think we do the enough. executive summary. As long as it's in there. And then we... So just the conversation that Corey and I had, you know, can yeah. you read in the first two pages what these people are saying? I stand corrected. It, it should not be at the end. Yeah, nobody will get that far. Great. <laughs> so we've now covered uh, sort of where we stand with uh, the draft document responding to the charges and this follow-up piece at the end. Uh, we've gone through it well, I think. Thank you all for that. Uh, but what we haven't done is said, I want to say this, and it says that, and the edits, and what does this mean kind of thing. So we have to get to that next, which I'm going to suggest we're not going to do in 20 minutes. Yeah, so can I suggest Please. that there are some sections that some of you are going to follow up with specific information. Right. If you guys could follow up with me about what didn't get in that yep. you thought should have gotten in. Those, so, right. Um, so that's when you discuss. We're going to do all those pieces, get you the things we've discussed that you need, our comments, so you can get to the next, a next draft, right? What I think I could do is send out a Word version of the file that you could send me back. That's great. That would be that we could that you track could changes. track changes in. I don't want to do it on the Google Doc because then everybody's changes get in there and it gets really confusing. Agreed. Thank you. But I also would suggest that you guys don't wordsmith it. That is what I'm trying to do. So if there's something I've said that is incorrect, or it's something that somebody else has said that's incorrect because I didn't really change much content, then fix that. But if it's just a 
wordsmithing thing, if we're all trying to edit the wordsmithing, it's going to get to be too complicated. Can, can I get a special pass on that? I'm not like an inveterate editor myself. So, uh. <laughs> you can get a special pass. But, you know, so you guys can, if I send out a Our Word document, can you can just you go through it and do the track changes. Yes, yeah, so I think this is a great plan. Make sense. Yes. So we're all clear on that. We have discussed things that we're each and various of us are going to share with Senator Hardy. Um, and then we've, we've got line edits. And that's all going to happen via responding to a Word doc that you, Senator Hardy, will send to. You can call to, me Ruth. But uh, to, the, to the other thing is that if you could, when you send it back to me, label it like New name. Michael's edits. Exactly. Yeah. So that yes. I know, so I can And you'll only get, one, for, for our part, you'll only get one from, from ANR. Honest. It'll okay. be from me, but it'll be standing okay. on the shoulders of that these giants. That would be easy, easier for me. Yes. And uh, <coughs> yeah. Robert, I expect a lot from you. <laughs> Yeah, okay, little. You're gonna get a little from me. Keeping it. <laughs> How do we do, folks? We're in a good place, I think, relatively speaking. We would need. That's what we're gonna do, and then we need to eventually get back together to say yes. Thanks, Ruth, for putting it all in. You got my heart right, and it's all in there. And now we have to discuss like the recommendations and the sort of conclusions, and are we all good with it? And we would need to do that in an open process, and we can do that, as I described at the outset, in a special meeting that you don't have to come to unless you want to, um, but I will reserve a room and have a space, and it's public, and, and I'll, we'll, we'll handle it that way. I think that's what we're planning to do next. So we, And so I can work with the new Deb on you know, finding a date for that and getting the information out to her. Does that sound like a good plan? likely be yeah. here is the physical location? Uh, uh, here, I would sure. suggest probably at National Life, okay. um, where the parking is still bad, but maybe better than here. Um, but it's also where our offices are, and I have control over, I can, I can reserve a good room for it there and have th the equipment. I, if it needs to be in the state house, I'm, I'm, I just I'm a little worried that we're having a transition of uh, staff support, and I, I sure. might not be able to pull it off. Okay. So, are you sorry? I was trying to send something to Ruth. Um, so, you're saying you're going to have a fiscal meeting that we can come to or not? Well, I'm it's sorry. I think maybe easier. you weren't in in the you were here when I we started that. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Okay. And I said, well, what if we were willing to come without? Um, yeah, and if you are, I'm fine with that. I just don't know how to handle that. I, I think it's the, it's up to everybody's the okay. discretion. I mean, so can we handle that now by sort we, of taking a straw poll? Are folks willing to do this without compensation to come to another sure. meeting? Compensation yeah. is yeah, so okay. huge. I, mean, I know. <laughs> Listen, I'm just trying to be respectful about it. Okay. <laughs> I, 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 I mean, if you, wanna, if you offer both options, it's just easier for people in the room. I fair think. enough. Yeah. Do you uh, have, I agree. It would be. This is good. So. Do you have Zoom capacity at A and R? Because that's do much we better. Zoom? Than yeah, I, I guess we do. do. Yeah. If you can set up a Zoom meeting for those, those uh, for people who can't come. That's a better technology than the phone or, or Skype. Skype. Well, we've had and a fair time with Skype, I agree. Yeah, yeah Skype. So, yeah. so doing a Zoom meeting and that, and then people can sit with their laptop. And so the it. idea would be we're going to have a sixth meeting, but folks have said they're willing to not request compensation, or if they don't want to travel, they can have the call-in option or the, the video option. But we're going to try to have everyone together. Is that, am I right about that? Yeah. Go ahead, Steve. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I have in my day timer the 6th of December, I wrote a note, reserve carbon. Is that, is that a date that's available to everybody? That may have been a vestige of an earlier doodle, uh, and but so it's not been selected, but it's a good point. Would everyone be willing to look at it right now? Did, did that get held somehow, miraculously, for people? Not for me. For me. The fourth it's a good day for me. Too. Sorry, Corey? Fourth. I can't no, pay the fourth has our, the legislators in town already. I can't be. Does here, that make actually. it a good meeting? Yeah. Okay. I'm not going to be here. Oh, but the sixth, I could do the sixth, um, especially if it's in the morning. Could people do the morning of the sixth? We can. I, well, funny, I have hold for carbon meeting. I do. That was one of the doodle poll options. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's, that's, I had it hold, held yes, too. Yes, that would work. I could do it. Either one. Mark, could, you could not. Well, I could not do the call in even could, or not? No, I'm going to be done from and, the first and, to the second. And John's state. not available either. I guess what I would, we can try to muscle through right now and find a date, which would be awesome, or I can do the doodle poll thing. Shall we? Is there a chance we could settle on a date? Let's try it. Let's what do you mean, Mark? 
uh, the first, and I'll be back that following Sunday. So yeah. that'd be so the ninth. Eight, uh, eight, eight yeah. is Monday. Yeah. Yeah. How about the tenth in the morning? We're, we have tenth in the morning. Uh, I could not do that. I could, I could do the 10. afternoon. How about the tenth in the afternoon? I, I could do the afternoon. Me too. I could. I, Who can't? I can't. I have, Darn. Yeah. <laughs> so close. I have to be back. I, I could do it late morning, early afternoon. I have, to, I have a meeting in Middlebury at 3.30 that I have to be at. Um, what about the 11th? We're now working on the 11th. Um, I can. I can. I can't do the morning. Afternoon of the 11th. I'm gone the 11th through the 14th. <laughs> I'm gone the whole week. <laughs> okay. <laughs> The, Into the week of the wait, 16th. Who do the 10th? Was I the only one who couldn't do the 10th? I think so. John can't. Oh. Um, the following week, I can't do the 17th. But the week of the 16th? <coughs> about the 18th? 16th's open. 18th is good for me. 18th, 18th is best for me. Yeah, 18th could work, work, work for me. Oh, boy. 18th. Robert, <laughs> you stop that. Can you do the 18th? Can you do the 18th? <laughs> well, we can, we can do this, but right. that's a yeah. month. We'll, 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 we'll zoom in if it's snowing. Right. Right. So we're proposing the afternoon of the 18th. Yes. And is it, I'm going to go with this. Speak now. If listen up, please. Yep. Speak now if you cannot make the afternoon of the 18th. <coughs> what are we calling the afternoon? Could we do the morning? If, 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 if people have the morning, is that better? Available? All right. Just, so sure. We're looking at nine to nine to one. One on the 18th. I, I couldn't four hours. Ten, but that's to a ten. Ten, two, ten, ten, ten to two. two is fine with me. Ten to two. Going once. Lunch. <laughs> what did you serve at lunch? Ah, oh, you bring lunch. <laughs> we'll, we'll make sure you don't die of hunger. Ten. What did I, I hear? I ten to two on the student. 18th. Provided. Ten to two on the 18th. We're going with it, folks. Everybody good? Mm -hmm. This is amazing. Good for me. Jack, thank you. Ten, ten to two. To two. Uh, Twelve eighteen. Are we really going to need four hours? If we don't need it, we, we won't use it. it. Um, um, and you're going to national life? Um, well, wait, let, let's see. Do to you be want determined, to, right? Uh, actually, to be determined right now, but there, it doesn't have to be. Uh, if, if there's staff support here, I think maybe keeping it here is better for the public. And let's start with you it. You decide. Uh, to Mr. be determined. Chairman. Thank you. Uh, there's food here. Okay. And there's food here, right. Right so, there. <laughs> can, we still have a couple more minutes. Yes. Can we just go over a couple more? Oh, we need to public We do. I don't know how much sure there's going to be because it's just us at this point. And um, Right. So <laughs> let's just pause. We, we're doing great here. But you, to be clear, what is it that you wanted to get back to? Well, so the findings and recommendation oh. sections. Go ahead, Mark. No. What, I, I was going to, I just wondered, I think it's important for us to enumerate our major findings up front so that, and then yes. recommendations. I'm just curious where we're at with that. Right, so we've um, agreed what we've done is we said that we are likely to have some yeah. and that they should be in the front of the document per your, your and Corey's comments about how, readability, and, <laughs> right? So we've done that, but what we haven't done is decided which, of, which will be there. Okay. Or even how to decide on that. Well, so just from the point of view as an editor, it's it's really easy. It's much easier to edit a document when I know what the recommendations are going to be. Yep. Because then you can, you sure. know, what? Yeah. It's just that you know what you're trying to. So how how what are we going to how do we get there? Exactly. So we've gotten we've gotten five things I've heard that people have mentioned as potential recommendations. And I was wondering if we could go through them and see, at least take a straw poll, it's not an official vote, yes. as to whether or not people are comfortable at least putting them in as draft recommendations. I think that I'm that. willing to accept that. Everybody good with that? I would say let's pause there, listen to public input, allow for it. If there is any, it might inform those, and I think that's fair. And then we'll come back and finish up with yeah. that. How's Sounds that? Sounds good. Super. Now, is there any public comment? <laughs> Allowing for it, the notes will reflect that there was a time allotted for it and none was offered. Thank you. Why don't you guide us through the, those that you heard, uh, Ruth? And okay, so there's the, the um, recommendation that Department of Forest, Parks and Rec, or your department, 
That's what it is. The okay. Department of Forest Parks and Rec. I like that better than my department. Okay. DFDR, whatever. What, what, no, that's it's FDR. Whatever it is. Eventually just referred to that, as FDR. The forest people um, would be, <laughs> would do, develop some forest kind of. Forest and fun. Pub, forest and fun. Would develop some sort of public um, uh, information uh, resource. That, uh, how this stuff works, what it yeah. is, as best what we it can. is, yep. how it works, who are the players, where are resources, that kind of thing. I'm not going to stand in the way of that as a recommendation. Does everyone feel comfortable? I with think that it's an appropriate role for us. Okay. Um, forest. FPR. Okay. I'll make it right. I'm just typing in a note to myself. Um, um, or also. Okay, and I will write these up formally, and they'll be in the draft draft. that I put. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay, and then the second one was the um, uh, look at the potential to develop a, a municipal forests um, aggregation plan to enter municipal forests. Was that the one of the four that you were hoping so to get out of this? The, the, the municipal piece, the municipal the piece and then a, and, and actually enrolling um, a, a parcel of state forest land into a carbon market. Um, and then the fourth one would be if we were to set up a state for a statewide program, this would be the next step. Those were my four. And right. then Cecilia had a fifth. I'm not ready to support a recommendation that there should be a state lands pilot because the report says we're not ready to do that. So your two, my. What I says if we were to, we would need certain things to happen. You would have to analyze a parcel to yeah. see what are the components of the parcel, mm -hmm. which is kind of what you do when you yeah. start any project, any of these forest projects. You have to analyze the parcel. Do you mean? Do you right. do a pre-analysis? What do you mean? Exactly? I'm talking about um, sort of what Robert walked us through, um, understanding what components or elements of a unit of land would make it feasible for a project. So we would want to work really closely with Robert to, I think, first better understand the specific purposes behind us wanting to enroll property, because that feels like step one. Understand the purpose, because that would inform them which unit of land makes the most sense that we would analyze to see whether or not um, it would really make sense. And then, and at this point, I think, sorry, Becca, but just, I think we would, our default assumption about what that purpose would be would be based on all the deliberations to this point, which lead us to, as a model and to demonstrate yeah. for others to benefit from for us to learn from and for private lands and municipal lands to learn from. So that would be our, I think, our starting place for why we would do it. I think that's that's what we would assume, is it's it's that playing that role as, and possibly as aggregator, an anchor for aggregation of private lands. Right. Yeah. We enumerate in our section a whole bunch of different right. variables that might influence uh, how we would put together a project based on what's our intended outcome and aggregation being yeah. one. Financial contributions, revenue being another, all of those different variables would inform how we would evaluate. You know, exactly. So that's all in the report, and and mm -hmm. and and right. to rec so the recommendation, in my view, would be to recommend that there be capacity and resources, that uh, additional capacity and resources at FPR to do these things: municipal outreach, websites, and outreach, and uh, uh, pursue the analysis and uh, of a uh, state lands thing. So. That's a recommendation I could get behind, not FPR must do this and leave us hanging in the wind. Right. No, I, I, that's totally fair. Cool. I guess what I'm hearing you say you need to answer. Sorry, this is awkward. I moved over here I'm to sorry. do that. Um, and we never did. Yeah. We never came back. Um, <laughs> the, um, what I'm hearing you say that it's necessary to do, my understanding of that, and I agree. I mean, obviously, that's work that needs to be done before you put it into any kind of market. But that is similar to the work that a project manager would do for any project, mm -hmm. even if it's not on state land. A, a carbon developer would do for uh, any project. Uh -huh. but I think it's taking it a step beyond the due diligence that we do when we're, when we're actually acquiring a parcel. There's, there's that set of due diligence, and then beyond that is another set that Cecilia referred to as, as expertise beyond what we have in our department right now. Okay. That, that's yeah. fair. So, okay. 
So it sounds like the phrasing, I like the way you phrased it, having the resources and capacity, but it wouldn't be saying you're going to enroll a project or you're going to develop a project, right. but it sounds like you're going to analyze the feasibility right. of a project. Um, and I was going to make that recommendation for the municipal one, too, and, so, and not say right. we're going to aggregate some town forests mm -hmm. and make a project, but would again, it would say mm -hmm. explore the, the options for towns to enroll town forests or to aggregate with other towns to participate in Thank you for that. Okay, so forest department. Uh, that's that's short. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Analyze the feasibility of enrolling. I, I would just clarify that it should be the agency only because yeah. yeah. It's a fair they point. Are, I mean, we have yeah. Jane. Jane here. This is the secretary. I'm here on behalf of the secretary. Jane is here, uh, voicing mm -hmm. for Fish and Wildlife in particular. So yes, the excellent point. Thanks, yeah. Jane. It's not just FPR. I think the. Yeah, so a and, go with A&R throughout. Okay. Right? Um, I, I have felt like up until this point, the other suggestions seem most... Well, and on the outreach and stuff, should that be us? And it seems relative. So fair enough. We'll split this. Yeah, so, right. So on the outreach and the municipal stuff, okay. that's fine like to be FPR. Mm -hmm. But um, where we get to state lands, it definitely needs to be a &R. Okay. Right? So yes. analyze the feasibility of enrolling a parcel of state forest lands into a carbon offset. Program. Um, you may even say A and R. Lines. I would say A and R because it's they're not all forest land. Some are parks. Some are wildlife management areas. So but can those be enrolled? Yes, yeah. if yeah. they're parks? forested. Yes. So oh. call them. I think referring to them as A and R lands in the state lands. Okay, lands. so that is actually something I changed in the report. Yes. I was yes. thinking, and yeah. you noticed that. Yeah. I, that's why I did it because I was like, I think they have to be forests, <laughs> but I can change that back. Yeah. That's easy to change back. Okay, state lands into a carbon offset program. <coughs> um, can we answer? right now the purpose question? Like I said, I think we assume the purpose to be dem for demonstration and um, learning purposes. You know, that's what, and, and, re and potential revenue, 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 revenue generation. Revenue. Yeah. Uh, for the purpose of... Um, it's all part of the facilitating well, others and helping. It's part of your idea that we're yeah. the information people and we would have some experience if we did it on state lands. And we like the idea of generating some income. Okay, I would make this sound better, but okay. You got Demonstration, it. generating income, um, and... Building expertise. And they were fairly thoughtful in their purposes, so there may be some wording there that you could pull up here. Okay. Um, and then... Uh, then the, the municipal one, what, how, how should we word that? Well, are people okay with this, the straw poll on the second one? I think it's exploring the feasibility or... I think we, Cecilia had an approach. Go for it. On yep. the municipal one. Yeah, just, just not to promise we're going to do it, but some, similar to the state, but even maybe a little less so, and explore the possibility of assisting right. towns in um, uh, engaging carbon market opportunities. Including aggregation. Including, you know, possibly, yeah, exploring mm -hmm. aggregation. Is well. it municipal forest lands or is there other? Yeah, that that would be good to statute. cover both town forests and um, urban forests. I think municipal works. Yes. Okay. For municipal forests. And that's how the, the statute forest refers forest to the municipal. Mm -hmm. Non-designated town forest municipal. Yes. Okay. And is the state going to purchase Burlington's credits? No, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> you, I bet you're going to leave from here and go out and buy a bunch, aren't you? <laughs> I already did. Yeah. <laughs> it only takes a minute. You can buy it for six bucks. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. So we're comfortable with that one? If it's just exploring the possibility, that's pretty... We're comfortable with being a draft options recommendation. Or something. And, you know, one is developing a project, and again, I say mar the marketing piece. It might be something the state can help with, ultimately. Marketing with the municipal ones or marketing in general? Oh, anybody. I mean, because if, let's say we work with the wedding industry, and if people are putting up their little wedding websites where they can buy presents for people, why couldn't they offset the carbon for their travel mm -hmm. to the wedding? Talk about entrepreneurs. Yeah. <laughs> no, you know, this is a thing. Yeah. I mean, yeah. The, yeah. People already do it. The, there's the, the, this, this uh, music group from the, uh, my 
my daughter's involved in and they're doing like a you know a tour the, the band tour and they're going to buy carbon offsets to offset their travel travel yep. and these are high school kids and i think <coughs> they would want to buy vermont carbon offsets right. if they could sure. maybe they'll buy the middlebury college ones jack i was just going to offer that yeah i'll send them your way <laughs> so we don't even have to require people to do it through act 250 but there are people that are already whenever i hold a conference and it's not easy to find a website you can click on and say offset your conference um, travel with um, vermont carbon is that getting in the way of yeah, yeah. I mean, can, to to say that um, the the department or the agency would suggest these are options for buying Vermont credits is that okay? I don't know. <laughs> I mean, is it is it violating some kind of that that the department can't favor one business over another? That, that, that's what I'm. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like if we said buy Middlebury College credits because they're Vermont. You yeah. can't do that. No. Right, exactly. But That's what I'm getting at. There's all yeah. kinds of policies established. Exactly. About That's yeah. But we at. could still explore, we could add the word explore, you know, not only developing the projects, but marketing. So they could, towns could decide how they want to market it or not. But. Okay. Because we haven't talked that much about it, but that's like the other half. Of well, there's a number of companies now that will buy offsets and then put the and then resell them through a portal um, for that exact purpose. Mm. Native so. Energy, a Vermont company, among them. Okay, so explore the possibility of aggregating and marketing Vermont municipal forest land for a carbon offset. Or explore the options of working with towns. We don't want to assume that we're sucking up their carbon state or whatever, but I would say explore options for assisting towns in um, developing carbon projects, potentially through aggregation, marketing them effectively. Okay. Because I think it would. Just like having the state lands enroll would help them understand the process of, car of market development. I, if the state were helping people with the marketing part, it would help them with okay. the marketing piece as well as the project development. Help them understand it options. Okay. I will. I have explored possibility of working with Vermont towns and cities to develop carbon offset projects, including aggregating <coughs> and marketing at Vermont municipal forest land. Something like that. Something like that. Okay. I Are think I, okay I could create a program to anybody that wanted to have an up buy an offset for me in one of my trees. I you know, I could do a name and they can yeah. purchase whatever ash tree, birch tree. tree, you name it. <laughs> well, That's so what it know. sounds like the city of Burlington is doing. Mm -hmm. Mark wants in on that. I'm on in. <laughs> okay. Uh, we and have nine minutes. <laughs> then the last one was the if you're gonna do it for a state project this would be a statewide project the next step would be X. if we were to recommend a statewide program as program. opposed to the state lands yeah. pi pilot <laughs> right yes do we want to say specifically that what we've been talking about that we think um, working through existing voluntary um, market standards and registries rather than create our own um, Yes. Do we yes. want to say that explicitly? Um, and therefore, state efforts would would focus on facilitating participation in these markets. I think that's a really good idea. And being a partner, because right. and partnering with yeah. yeah with other entities with um, interest and capacity. Everybody good with that? Mm -hmm. Yep. Thanks. Do I name them, um, like private partners such as? Do I say that? Probably not. Okay. Um, current use. Do we want to be have a specific recommendation about current use? Have you read our section yet? Not as closely as I need to. Yeah. I mean, because it, it, I think the, the points we'd be making, if anything, would be that there's compatibility. Um, and I, I'd recommend that we don't do anything that would undermine the integrity of the program and its functioning now. And I think there is a risk of that. 
um, by sort of sort of saying that well now there's this whole other component to the program. So I think we should build on the compatibility that already exists and not try to create a special carbon program because I think it jeopardizes the entire program. So I think we need to be explicit yeah. about that. I'm in agreement <coughs> with you Great. that we we need to like so I said, the recommendation would be to not create a new program within current use, but to, to uh, leverage the existing compatibility with carbon as a management strategy yes. in the existing yes. standards of the program. Yes. And, and then get to your point earlier also about not requiring that as a right. condition. Yeah, yeah. And be careful about any future changes that might... Um, be we would recommend, the of I'll take a shot at it. Okay. Thank you. I would recommend we would, for your, we would pr maybe recommend that um, they're not that rather than create a whole new program within current use, we would look to leverage the existing compatibility in the program for carbon managing for carbon and enrolling in offset pro projects uh, with the Cecilia sort of factor. Uh, referenced, which you already have somewhere else. I'll, I'll rewrite you then. I would say that rather than create a new program within the current use or UVA, a new category, a new category uh, within uh, of enrollment eligibility within UVA, we recommend um, leveraging the existing compatibility that exists. Um, so as, frankly, and I think to be explicit, so as to maintain the integrity of the program, its original purposes and uh, which are not threatened by offsets, um, but could be if we went sort of too far with the offsets and, and uh, per, per Cecilia's point. There's also this larger issue that I think someone needs to say that I'll say is that um, it's, it's, it's very, it, there, there's a, by, by the, the vulnerability is that if you start this whole other thing, it opens up the whole question, and I think we're vulnerable to having people say it's a $60 million program, the costs of the state, and we need to do away with that. Um, that's a, a real danger. Then we lose, we're throwing the baby out with the bathwater, and that's a problem. So that's where I'm coming from when I say this, that we, there's a, there is compatibility. We've done the analysis, and it, it, you can be enrolled in current use and still have a chance to sell offsets in a market, uh, and we're saying work with that not create a whole new eligibility or um, requirements for a carbon plan in current use, for example, it's already, it's already allowable. And that's what we need to maintain. And, and any, any movement to connect this to current use should, be, should honor that. That okay. it's leveraging the existing compatibilities, not creating a new <coughs> category or new program standards. Keith, did you want to comment on that? Is, with that as a specific recommendation, it presumes that there is some anticipation of a specific um, Why would we countering a specific recommendation that I'm not sure is even, even, is even there. Fair so enough. I'm wondering if in the, in the uh, there's already the recommendation of developing materials and communicating and it, it could be a subordinate recommendation related to that clarify the compatibility and process by which uh, UVA enrolled lands may participate That's in carbon super. markets. That's super. Really helpful. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Can, can we go with that? Did you catch enough Clarify, of that? Clarify. Yeah. It's, it's in your original charge, your recommendation that we beef up our outreach on this. Yes. Yeah. Doing so in the current, in the context yeah. of the current use standards, program standards, is a really wonderful idea, right? Mm -hmm. Super. So, so I just wanted, I like that better. I was yeah. going to yeah. ask you, what do you mean by leverage? I, was, cool it's word. A, I don't know. It's a word legislators use. Exactly. So I, <laughs> but they, <laughs> But they, they, you know, it is part of our mission here. It's evaluate how to utilize, among other things, Vermont's use value appraisal program to maximize the potential value of forest land in carbon sequestration markets while right. enhancing conservation. And to that charge, our recommendation would be to, uh, to direct the department um, to, uh, um, to be, I don't know, better words, but you know, increase our, our outreach and uh, to landowners for how carbon offset enrollments could fit into current use. And, yeah. Well, sorry. <coughs> you need it again? Sorry. Is that what you're saying? No, I'm just. I I think if this is a. I appreciate that he said this because I I, I thought your recommendation was kind of a negative. Like a, uh, me too. Yeah, I yeah. accept it as a really so, helpful solution. But, uh, but I'm wondering if we want to, and and 
I was going to also suggest that, oh, it's compatible with UVA. It's also compatible with harvesting. It's also compatible with all these other things. And we could list that all in these. But then I was like, do we want to create a laundry list? And so I'm kind of going back and forth as to whether I want to suggest it. So that's why. If I, it's, I think we're talking in the context of recommendations. So if it can be a recommendation to do so, yes. But if not, I'd say no. We should leave it out. The compatibility could go in the findings. We haven't really talked about that's what right. that's yeah. going to okay. look like. Yeah. So if, because we're not going to get to the findings, can everyone send me what they think should be a finding? Yes. Like this, I want to make yes. sure this is included in a finding. Keith, here. sorry, uh, Steve. Yeah, I, I want to express a concern I have, um, but and it relates to um, in incentivizing people to do this. If the current use advisory board should plug into their fam their formula, right. An imputation to all land on all forest landowners. There's a certain <coughs> some element just because you own forest land that you could be selling carbon offset credits, and so we're going to impute that income to you to the base form and increase your yeah. property taxes. Yeah. That I would be strongly opposed to. Fair point. And and in the same vein, I would say let those forest landowners who do receive income from these offset credits, let them keep it without having it affect their their property taxes. Right. You know, right. Increase their property taxes because of you know, enhanced value. Right. Is it, uh, if you really want people to enroll this way. We are not making a recommendation to the current use advisory board to change the rate setting formulas to include the potential income from carbon offsets. We're not making that recommendation. And I think it's important to say up front what we've all heard and thought that the vast majorities of Vermonters, the carbon markets are not something they can participate in There's a right finding. now. That's a and finding. Um, so therefore, if people can't access that market, then they can't add that into the along with the something value in calculating you. Right. Because it's just not open to most people. Thank you. And I won't be years, which will be my expiration date. <laughs> <laughs> you told me this, you, you, you have a reason to get up in the morning, so that's, that's good. And Keith? There were a few places, recommendations related to uh, changes to UVA that would increase the compatibility with carbon markets that are not consistent with the recommendation that right. just raised. So I think those we're those, gonna flag those in those our comments. And should be aligned. Yes. Thank you. Senator Hardy, how are you doing? Okay, I just feel the thing, but <laughs> yeah. no, um, nice work. Are we almost there? Do you want to, any more recommendations to suggest? Well the four recommendations, the the website, just to put them simply, the yeah. website, the state land analysis exploring the possibility of town forests yep. and then if we were to do a statewide program depend on the expertise of private partners engaging be a good partner blah 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 that one that one i need a little bit we need more to office. flush that out to flush that out so if you have a suggestion any quick around the about. table for that now otherwise that would be in subsequent emails is yeah. that the robert proposal not necessarily okay. i think that it, but it's some variation it's getting at this public private partnership yeah to right. facilitate yeah but we're all but those four recommendations generally we're all okay with so that as we lead toward editing this more i can say this is the, this so is what we're going for right yes yes okay great um Okay. So can I just set a deadline for you guys getting back to me? Please do. That's I will, fair. I will um, send this to you tomorrow. Um, it will probably be, st still have my weird notes in it so you can, um, so if we're meeting essentially in a month, next week is um, Thanksgiving, if you could get me something by the 6th. You say what it should be. If you if you can get me and actually get it to me, I mean no offense to everybody, <laughs> you are all late except all for Robert. <laughs> so so I don't want it then that like the forty eight hour thing again. That was uh, obviously didn't work. So um, if you could get me something by the sixth, that will give me a week and a half to edit it and get back to you with Everybody questions. Everybody good? Seems fair to me. And if you guys could give me your phone numbers, I think you all have mine. So if I have a question specifically for you. 
that would be helpful. So you want, by that date, before that, though, wait a minute, you want us to send you a whole bunch of little things we promised yeah, so in the next these, couple days. Yeah, so whatever we can, as here. soon as we can get yeah. stuff to her, but and no later than the 6th. But the, but yeah. No, but the 6th oh, is for our edit. So she so, needs stuff beforehand to send it so that we back can have out a new to draft her. edit. Yeah, so, so basically, I'm going to send you a Word document. You can go through it and do just the track changes in that Word document. And then send it back to me and say with the labeled Cecilia's changes. Then I'll go through, see your changes, and incorporate them. But your changes may contradict with Jim's changes, right, so right, I right. need to see everybody's changes and then nope. make some decisions. So you're saying you want all of those individual changes by the sixth? But I, I thought you were also asking us for little things along the yeah, way that you need within the next day or two to put into the document oh, that, that we then do track changes. Yeah, on. yeah, that that makes sense. So yes. Um, Okay, so Sorry. why don't no 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 you're absolutely right. So why don't you get me the the little things that I asked for um, by before Thanksgiving? Okay. What does that mean? The, the Thanksgiving is Wednesday. Is Wednesday. So by Wednesday the twenty seventh. So all these other things. So that's eight days. Thanks. Okay. And so if I have marked down that Cecilia is going to send me something or Jim or yes. whomever Jack you two yeah. or lots of yeah. things. Um, small get things them to by, me before Thanksgiving. Small things as we're calling them by the 27th. So that comments and line edits, etc., by the 6th. The yeah, 7th. so I'll send, once I get your small things, I'll put them into the document and then I'll send it back out to you as a Word document. That we can edit. That you back can out. edit. But I, by what I ask for your edits is you keep them focused so that it's not a mess. But I got a special pass. Yeah, exactly. Go ahead, Becca. Are our finding suggestions part of the small things? Good question. Yes. 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 Okay. Does that make sense? Okay. Helpful yep. clarification. Thank you. Yeah.